Hello everyone, am I audible? Hello all, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. So here we are with, wow, what a date we have the session today. Exactly one month to go for the exam. Isn't it? So one month to go, are you all set? Are you all ready for the exam? So today we are here to discuss the rapid revision in dermatology. But one thing I'll tell you, if we have to discuss the rapid revision, we have to have read the topic once before. For all my students here, just give me a yes or no. Have you read dermatology before? Because here in these three hours that we have today, I will be quickly going through the subject, covering only the important points, assuming assuming that you all have read once because otherwise it is a two-day subject but here we have to rapidly revise it we have to just cover the quick points that are asked in the exam but oh why do i see more of no's than yes oh god you're making it a nice evening for me isn't it please somebody type yes also my dear dearer and dearest students Please say yes. Okay, yes, I got one yes, a few more yeses. So, okay, okay, okay. <coughs> Let's not uh, type any more responses here. It's okay. I know that the majority answer is that some of you have read and some of you have not read. But today what we will do here is that we will revise the important points of dermatology and wrap it up in the session yes i will be wrapping up in this session but you will have to sit with me through these three hours and i can promise you that there will be no question asked outside of what we discussed today yes for all of those who have studied the subject before it may be a little easy to grasp what i'm telling for others who may not have read it before it's okay just think that you are getting to know the important points in the subject you know that this is there to study you sit with me through the three hours here you see the video again after going through the subject tomorrow so you know you sit with me through these three hours then maybe try to do a little more questions from it try to see the pyqs and then see the video again after one day is the volume low? Is the volume low? Even now? Is the volume low, dear? Okay, so if you have read the subject once, you will have immense benefit from these three hours and I will tell you not even one question outside of what we discussed today. But if you have not read, it doesn't matter. Sit today, do the PYQs tomorrow and see the video again. You know, it will be easier for you to understand. Now, when we talk about dermatology, it is not a subject which you can take lightly like all other subjects we have about 8 to 10 questions from it those 8 to 10 questions are half images and half text but uh, if you have not read then it may get a little difficult for you but if you have read you have attended this revision you have done the pyqs 
you are all set because there is not even one question in dermatology which is not asked previously and which is not discussed here. So I will say this again and again that you don't have to at all worry if you attend this. So we'll start for those people who have not, uh, who don't understand it's okay, you can post your doubts. I'll clear them as I get time. So starting with dermatology rapid revision, coming to lines in dermatology, a very important topic for the FMG exam is the lines in dermatology. In fact, it is now so important that it has even been asked in the INI May 2023 exam. So the exam which was conducted just this year in May also had a question on these lines. And INI is conducted twice a year, FMG is conducted twice a year. If you people go and see these exams side by side, maybe other faculties have also told you, a lot of topics which are asked in the INI CT are also asked in the FMG exam. So here in this class today, I will be telling you not just those questions which have been asked in the FMG exam previously, but I have also marked the questions which have been asked in the NEET and the INICT in the last three years. So these are all important for you, okay? You cannot just revise uh, a few things and go for the exam. It is no longer that kind of an exam. You have to be fully prepared for it. Now, coming to lines in dermatology, we have three important lines. The Blaschkoid lines, the dermatomes and the Langer's lines. These Blaschkoid lines are the lines of embryonal migration. They, how do you identify it in the picture? When you see the picture, you see that there is a midline demarcation. There is always a midline demarcation and the shape of these lines depends upon the body areas. When you get such an image, look at the scalp, look at the trunk, and look at the limbs. So every time wherever you see these lines, the shape will be different on different body areas. That is how you will recognize these blaschkoid lines. Some important uh, lesions that we see along the blaschkoid lines include incontinentia pigmenti and hypomelanosis of Ito. Now there are some diseases which are asked on their own and there are some diseases which are also asked in the options. So here I will be talking about all of them because you even need to know what is asked in the options. They might ask that in the exam and even if you want to eliminate, you want to guess the correct answer, then also you need to remove the options, have some idea about what those are. So the Blaschkoid lines, midline demarcation and the shape is different on different body areas. That is the first thing that you will notice once you see this image. Now, the second image that we have here are the dermatomes. Dermatomes Is the volume still low? Is the volume still low? <coughs> so when you look at the dermatomes, these are the areas which are supplied by different nerves. When you look at this image, you see even in dermatomes, there is a linear midline demarcation and these lines are straight. Wherever on the body these are, these lines are always straight. So this is one more difference that you see as compared to the Blaschkoid lines. The, can you tell me one disease that happens along the dermatomes? Can you tell me one disease that happens along the dermatomes? Herpes zoster. So one disease that happens along the dermatomes is herpes zoster. And then we have the Langer's lines, which was in fact the question asked in the INI 23. When you look at Langer's lines, these are the lines along which the collagen fibers are oriented. Now, when you look at this image, it looks like a mummy who is bandaged. So this looks like a mummy who is bandaged. So Egyptian mummies, you've seen the movie also. 
as if the body is wrapped in the bandages. So when you see the three lines again, the blashcoid lines, most important, shape different on different body areas. Dermatomes, always straight lines. And Langer's lines are mummy wrapped in bandages. The importance is since the as are oriented along the collagen fibers, this is the line along which we give the surgical excision. Incision. So whenever you see a surgery OT, you will see that a printout of these Langer's lines is pasted on the walls in the OT because whenever we have a patient, we have to operate whichever body area, the incision depends upon the Langer's lines of that area. These are also called as relaxed skin tension lines. Okay. Now, Coming to appendageal disorders, very, very important. In fact, out of the total time that we spent today, almost 20% of the subject will be these appendageal disorders because every year at least two questions are asked in this topic. Now, coming to hair, the disorder that we have to talk about in the hair is alopecia, that is loss of hair. When we talk about alopecia, it's of two types, non-scarring and scarring. The non-scarring alopecias will be temporary and regrowth will be seen, while the scarring alopecias will have a permanent loss of hair without any regrowth. And the scarring alopecias are also called as cicatricial alopecias. These are also called as cicatricial alopecias. So what we have is non-cicatricial and cicatricial alopecia. Now this is a very important list as you can see this question has been asked in the INICT exam twice in November 22 as well as May 23 and you never know if they can ask in the FMG exam as well. So I will wait for this image to load. Now, coming to this image, see, when we talk about alopecias, I just told you we have non-scarring, which is the non-cicatricial alopecia, and we have scarring, which is the cicatricial alopecia. Now, there is a mnemonic here for non-scarring alopecias, which is called as TREATS. Look at this here, T R trichotillomania, then the R is for alopecia areata. E stands for effluvium, A is androgenic alopecia, then we have tinea capitis and the 2S stand for morthetan alopecia that we see in secondary syphilis and SLE. So it may look a little difficult to remember but not so difficult because these are alopecias that you read everywhere, these are names that you keep seeing as options in almost every question on alopecia. So just remember that all the names that come here, treats, these are all non-scarring alopecias. If you remember one list, okay, if you remember one If you remember one list, is this uh, volume better now? Okay, so when we say, uh, when I talk about these lists, actually there is some issue related to volume raised by some students. I hope it is fine now. Okay, so when we talk about these alopecias, I will suggest that you remember just one list. Okay, just remember one list. There is no need to remember both the list. Why? Why? Because you will just get a question on one. Agar aapko non-scarring pata hai, if you know non-scarring alopecias, you can automatically answer any question that comes on this classification. So just remember this mnemonic that is TREATS. Trichotillomania, alopecia areata, effluviums, androgenic alopecia, tinea capitis, 
secondary syphilis and SLE. These are all non-scarring alopecias. Now, when we get a question again, what I want is that in the question you identify what is the pattern of the alopecia. If it says there is a diffuse hair loss all over the scalp, okay? If it says that there is a diffuse hair loss all over the scalp, the answer is always going to be effluvium. Whichever, that I will tell you, but you have to just know, if it says diffuse alopecia, diffuse hair loss, the answer is effluvium. If the question says patchy hair loss, then the answer is one of these, which is alopecia areata, tenia capitis and trichotillomania. So this is a way you can rule out the other options. And if there is a specific pattern, then of course, the answer is androgenic alopecia. Okay. So this is just to tell you how to eliminate the other options when you get such a question in the exam. So pattern is androgenic alopecia, diffuse would be effluviums and when there is a patch, then it will be areata, tenia capitis or trichotillomania. <coughs> now, Coming to androgenic alopecia, very important to remember the hormone which is responsible here that is 5-dihydrotestosterone, the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. So 5-dihydrotestosterone and the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. In the men, it starts from the frontotemporal area and in the women, it starts from the central parting. So just remember in the men, when you get an image, you will see that the alopecia is following a specific pattern, starts from the frontotemporal area and then there is a pattern that you see here. In the women, it starts from the central parting increases to the sides in a typical pattern which is called as Christmas tree pattern. What is the treatment that you use in AGA? Topically we use minoxidil, orally we use finasteride and deuterosteride. These are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. So what you need to know here importantly is the mechanism of action of finasteride. This is a question that comes in pharmacology also. It is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. 5-MG dose is used in benign prostatic hyperplasia while 1-MG dose is used in androgenic alopecia. So, this is a very important question that comes from here. Next, we come to the effluviums. In effluvium, the question will say diffuse hair loss. So, when it says diffuse hair loss, Is there a lot of lag? No problem, I'll wait for the lag to finish. So is this, uh, are we there now? Yes. So whenever we talk about effluviums, effluvium, the question says the patient has diffuse hair fall. So if a patient has cancer chemotherapy and there is a sudden severe hair fall, the answer is anagen effluvium. So you just have to look at the question. If it says cancer chemotherapy, answer is anagen effluvium. On the other hand, if the question says that the patient has just had a baby or has suffered from dengue, COVID or typhoid or a major surgery, and very importantly, there is a gap of three to four months between the hair loss and the hair fall. The answer is telogen effluvium. Are you understanding? In case of a diffuse hair loss, cancer chemotherapy, anagen effluvium. Any trigger after which a gap of three to four months followed by hair fall, the answer is telogen effluvium. Okay? The answer is telogen effluvium. 
Now, these are the three patches that you see. Alopecia areata, trichotillomania, tenia capitis. In case of alopecia areata, you will see that the lesion has a well-defined round to oval shape. The skin within the lesion is completely smooth and bald. There is no change in the skin. It looks like a completely normal bald skin. So a well-defined round patch of alopecia with a smooth skin. This is alopecia areata. What I call is chikni chameli. So alopecia areata looks like a chikni chameli hair loss. The skin is completely normal in it. Now we come to trichotillomania. If you look at this word, trico means hair, tillo means pulling and mania means it's a psychiatric disorder. This is a OCD. So here a patient is pulling out their own hair. So if they pull out, will there be a specific shape? No, they will pull out in a random manner. So there will be no well-defined shape. It will be a bizarre lesion, irregular margins, broken hair, bleeding, perifollicular hemorrhages. It will look like a dirty hair loss. Matlab kisi ne dhang se baal bhi nahi se nikale. Tute, foote baal hai, some broken, some pulled out, different lengths. So this is like a ganda, dirty hair fall, completely opposite of what you see in alopecia areata. Okay, and lastly what we have is tenia capitis. Now this is a fungal infection. Always and always in a child, whenever you get a question of tenia capitis, patient will always be a child and there will be a partial alopecia. You see some hair are intact and then you see black dots. So you see a partial alopecia and you see black dots. Again, it is not the chickney skin that you see in areata. So these are the ways you can identify the image. Alopecia areata, completely clean skin. Trichotillomania, not clean. Broken hair, perifollicular hemorrhages. Tenia capitis, you see black dots. So are these three patches clear to you? Very, very important question. Every alternate exam, one question from these patches or other types of alopecias is always asked. Now, coming to alopecia data in detail, look at this here. This was asked in June 2021. This was asked in December 2019. So, two questions on areata in the last five years. Now, alopecia areata, I already told you, will be well-defined smooth patches. You can also see multiple patches. Then you can see lesions in the eyebrow, in the beard. It doesn't matter. You have to identify the image. Please one warning and one advice. You consider it as an advice. You consider it as a warning. Don't try to rote learn the images. What I put here would be an image of my patient. It could be an image from Google. But the examiner is going to put an image of his own patient. So never try to memorize images because what you see in the uh, class, what you see in the PDFs which circulate in your groups, those images will not be there in the exam, but a similar image of the disease will be there. So what you have to learn is how to identify the disease, how to identify the image. You are not going to memorize and rote learn the images. This is the biggest mistake that every student does. Okay, not just FMG, it is across exams. But please remember, this is not to be done. If I say... Alopecia areata will be a clean smooth patch. You should have it in your mind. Your mind should know it. If you see such an image in the exam, you will identify. Don't try to remember the image that I am showing you. Okay. So this is an autoimmune disease. It kills the black hair, spares the gray. You see these well-defined images. But what is the most important finding which has been asked twice in your exams is this photo. These are the exclamation mark hair which we see in alopecia areata. These are the exclamation mark hair. Please very, very, very important. Look at this image again. You see that the hair that comes out of the skin is slightly thin. Then as it moves away, it becomes broad. So this looks like an exclamation mark hair. Very, very, very important image. And on the nail, this finding is called as pitting. Pitting means gadde. 
छोटे छोटे गड्ढे ऑन द नेल दिस क्वेश्चन ऑन नॉट ऑन पिटिंग एन एलोपीशिया रेटा बट पिटिंग इन सोराइस हैज बीन आस्ट इन टू अगेन दे गेव यू एन इमेज ऑफ अ नेल डिसीज एंड आस्ट यू टू आइडेंटिफाई नाउ you have to know the differences between the pitting in alopecia areata and pitting in psoriasis because that will help you diagnose so when you see the pitting in alopecia areata you see that these pits are regularly arranged this is the most important thing that you have to note in the nail these pits are regularly arranged because of which it is also called as a geometric nail so this is also called as a geometric nail on the other hand in nail psoriasis pits will be irregular so in nail psoriasis i'll show you the image as we go to that topic but in nail psoriasis the pits will be irregular while in alopecia areata they will be so regular that it is called as a geometric nail what is the treatment of choice <coughs> for alopecia areata what is the treatment of choice injection triamcinolone which we give intra lesional so within this lesion i give this injection which is called as intra lesional triamcinolone next we come to trichotillomania question was asked in your july exam this is a disease in which the patient pulls out their own hair it's an obsessive compulsive disorder it's a psychiatric disease sometimes the patient can eat the hair which they pull out this is called as trichophagia and of course the body can't digest hair so they will form a big ball inside the git this ball is called as trichobezoar this is a common complication in trichotillomania it can cause intestinal obstruction so this was the question that was asked in your july exam a patient who is a known case of trichotillomania eats the hair that they pull out what is the complication that can result from it that is a trichobezoar it's a stone like ball which is made of hair treatment of choice for trichotillomania cognitive behavior therapy if you have to give a drug then drug of choice are ssris okay since this is a psychiatric disease treatment of choice is cbt next we come to tinea capitis in tinea capitis there are two variants which are the non inflammatory variants these are the gray patch and the black dot very important in terms of images very important for the exam also so for gray patch remember this mnemonic this is gmc where g stands for gray patch m is for the fungus which causes it microsporum c is the type of infection this you read in micro also it is an ectotrix type of infection now when you look at this image the word gray tells you that this will have a lot of gray colored scaling so very important in gray patch you see gray colored scaling in black dot you see black dots so the name itself is telling you what you are going to see in gray patch gray color scaling in black dot black dots the mnemonic here is bnt where b stands for black dot n is for endothrix and t is for the fungus which causes it that is trichophyton ectothrix means the fungus is on the outer surface of the hair endothrix means it is inside the hair so these are the different non inflammatory tinea capitis then we have the inflammatory variants in the inflammatory variants this was a question asked in 2020 fmg exam what is the causative fungus of fabus so please remember fabus is caused by a specific fungus which is called as trichophyton schonlonii this is called as trichophyton schonlonii so just remember this is the specific name that you have to remember trichophyton schonlonii causes fabus and then we have kirion in kirion there will be a child presenting with a red boggy swelling studded with pustules with local lymphadenopathy the question may say that an 8 year old child presented with a red boggy swelling on the scalp with pustules the cervical lymph nodes are enlarged what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is kirion can anyone tell me how do you differentiate kirion from a bacterial infection 
from a pyoderma how can we differentiate kirion how can we differentiate uh, kirion from a pyoderma how can we differentiate a kirion from a pyoderma very very important kirion is a fungal infection it will be only mildly painful and sometimes the question may say duration of 2 3 months so if it is mildly no lymph nodes can be involved in both you can have a lymphadenopathy in both fungal and bacterial but if you ever have a bacterial infection you even have a small puscule isn't it painful it's very painful so pyodermas are very painful and the duration will be just two three days there on the other hand this will only be mildly painful and the duration will be a long duration all fungal infections how much ever redness you see swelling you see they are all painless like we see in mycetoma we see in other subcutaneous mycosis so fungal infections are always painless and they are present for a long duration so this is a very important hint towards diagnosis of this so this is a kirion i have drawn animals here to tell you that this is generally caused by fungi that come from animals now whenever you get a question on fungal infections a question that is asked is what is the next investigation next investigation is always a koh scraping <coughs> next is always a koh scraping and woods lamp can be positive can show a green color on woods lamp treatment of choice griseofulvin 15 to 20 mg per kg per day 4 to 6 weeks so treatment of choice is griseofulvin given for 4 to 6 weeks very very important to know this and remember only oral treatment we don't give topical shampoos here now coming to these cicatricial alopecias in the cicatricial alopecias you don't get much questions lichen plano pilaris jahan pe word lichen aa gaya wahan pe it will always be purple it will always be a violaceous patch of scarring alopecia then in discoid alley you just have to remember the name of this sign it is called as carpet tag sign they are not asked as images please don't worry these three are not asked as images only thing that they can ask is the signs so in discoid alley we have a sign which is called as carpet tag sign pseudopilado brock the sign is called as footprints in the snow pattern that's it Itna yaad rakho ke ye scarring alopecia hai aur inke signs ke naam yaad rakho. So carpet tag sign and footprints in the snow pattern. Traction alopecia used to be an image based question you know when you go back to 2016-17 FMG exams this question was asked okay. So what is the meaning of traction? Traction means pulling. So when you see the girls who have very tight ponytails which pulls their hair some hair from the front may be lost so if you get such an image look for a tight ponytail so if you get a question with a girl having a tight ponytail the answer is traction alopecia see at this point one month before the exam we are not trying to read the subject fully all i want is ke aapke saamne image aaye aap image ko identify kar pao haan thodi uske aage peeche pata hona chahiye but uh, ye put sakte hai. morphia morphia is a type of localized scleroderma what is the meaning of sclero sclero means tight so the skin becomes tight there is a fibrosis in the skin here so yahan pe aapko kya image dikhegi aisa lagega gajni ki photo de diya exam mein are all of you comfortable with a little hindi here and there See, we talk only in English. There will be some sprinkle of Hindi in between. So, all good? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, when you see an image of morphia, it will be like you have an image of Ghajani in front of you. There will be a scar running from the skin to the scalp in a line. So, this is called as 
linear morphia also called as n cub d sabar so just as a text based question this has been asked once you should know n cub d sabar is another name for linear morphia cub means fight sabar means sword so this looks like a scar which has left from a sword fight okay so this is n cub d sabar and linear morphia clear only traction alopecia and linear morphia can be asked as images from scarring alopecia nothing else so this is what you have to remember again see traction alopecia tight ponytail morphia will be gajani in front of you okay we finish with alopecia we now move to the glands in the glands we have the eccrine sweat gland the apocrine sweat gland and the sebaceous glands so these are the three glands Eccrine sweat glands से हमसे ज्यादा क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछते हैं यू शुड जस्ट नो अ डिसऑर्डर विच इज कॉल्ड एज मेलेरिया हैपन्स ड्यू टू ब्लॉक्ड एक्राइन स्वेट ग्लैंड वेन एवर देर इज लॉट ऑफ हीट ह्यूमिडिटी देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ स्वेटिंग यू कैन गेट मेलेरिया ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट दैट नेक्स्ट वी कम टू एपोक्राइन ग्लैंड एपोक्राइन ग्लैंड द डिसीज दैट वी हैव टू रिमेंबर फॉक्स for dicey disease and hydra dinitis suppurativa okay so these are the two diseases that we have to remember with the apocrine glands and with the sebaceous glands we have acne and rosacea okay so with the sebaceous glands we have acne and rosacea these are about the glands coming to the first disease which is fox for dicey disease fox for dicey disease is also called as apocrine malaria this used to be a very favorite question if you go back and see 2015 16 17 18 very favorite was fox for dicey disease in fact as back as 2013 14 also they have asked so fox for dicey disease is also called as apocrine malaria from the name apocrine malaria can you tell me what is happening here when we say apocrine malaria that means these glands are getting blocked now a for apocrine a for the areas in which they are found which is axillary nipple and the groin area and a for androgen that means these are androgen dependent they become active at puberty so a for apocrine a for ang a for androgen that means they become active at puberty so if there is a disease affecting the apocrine glands it will be found in these areas the disease will come after puberty because that is when these glands become active here the patient is always a female because 90 to 95% cases are females patient presents with itchy skin colored papules in the axillary and the groin area so when you get such an image in which there are papules in the axillary generally the image that you get in the exam is papules in the axillary and remember that these are itchy there are some questions which will say all are true about fox for dicey disease except so please remember that these are always itchy they are not painful then we come to hydrodenitis suppurativa i think this was asked as an image last year in your exams this is a disorder which is due to blockage of apocrine as well as the hair follicles again it will be seen in ang and what you will get is multiple abscesses in the axillary and the groin so if you get this kind of a picture abscesses nodules scarring in the axillary and the groin the answer is hydrodenitis suppurativa also called as inverse acne so you also have to remember the synonym for this inverse acne is another name for hydrodenitis suppurativa when you get such an image nodules abscesses in the axillary generally the image is given of the axillary so when you see this image this is hs now there is another thing which is called as for dicey spots now what are for dicey spots <laughs> i didn't write it in any disease i didn't write it in disorders of apocrine glands 
I didn't write it in disorders of these sebaceous glands. So I didn't write it anywhere. What do you think it is? Is it not a disease? What glands does it affect? Waiting for a response from you all. Tell me, why did I not write for dicey spots there? Because this is not a disease. These are ectopic sebaceous glands. These are ectopic sebaceous glands. Please remember it is not a disease. So this is not a disease. These are ectopic sebaceous glands. How do you remember? S for sebaceous. S for, for dicey spots. So do not confuse it with fox for dicey disease. Please don't confuse it with fox for dicey disease. Fox for dicey disease affects the apocrine glands while for dicey spots affects the sebaceous glands. S for spots, S for sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands produce oil. So they are yellow in color. So what you see here are number of yellow, yellow dots on the lips. So you see these yellow dots on the lips. When you get such an image in which there are yellow dots on the lips, the answer is for dicey spots. Now remember they can be seen on the lips. They can also be seen on the glands penis. So for dicey spots can be seen on the oral as well as the genital area. So this is very, very, very important. Now, coming to the disease of pilosebaceous unit. Again, remember, very important, acne is not just a disorder of sebaceous gland. It is a disorder of pilosebaceous unit. Means it involves the hair as well. So acne, you get a question, it's a disorder of sebaceous gland apocrine gland, eccrine gland and the pilosebaceous unit. The correct answer is pilosebaceous unit because it affects the hair as well as the gland. Almost five questions of acne vulgaris have been asked in the last seven exams. So in the last seven exams, five have had a question on acne very 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 important okay very important the first thing that happens in acne is the formation of the primary lesion which is called as comedon so comedon is the primary lesion of acne this was a question asked in the december 22 fmg exam where they gave an image of acne and they asked what is the primary lesion please remember it is no papule it is no pustule the correct answer here is comedon that is the primary lesion of acne then the sebum increases name of the bacteria was asked in the june 2021 exam they asked you what bacteria is the causative agent in acne, the answer is Propinobacterium acnes. This is the name of the bacteria. So what you have to remember here is number one, comedon is the primary lesion. Number two, sebum increases. Number three, the name of the bacteria that is Propinobacterium acnes. Okay. Now, just look at this. These were the questions that were asked. Actually, December 22 exam, say I meant the Jan 23 exam. There was no exam in December 22. So, this is the Jan 23 exam in which they gave this kind of an image in which the patient had papules, pustules. They asked what is the primary lesion. Lot of students marked papules. Lot of them marked pustules. Very few marked comedons. So, remember this is very important. Then, this was the question asked in the August 2020 exam. They gave an image of this, which are comedones. How do you identify comedones? You see black dots. You see black dots. These are all black comedones. So on the forehead, you see these are all the black comedones here. That means it is comedonal acne, treatment of choice, topical retinoids. What are the topical retinoids that we can use? Tretinoin and 
adapt me the topical retinoids that we can use are tretinoin and adapalene when <coughs> comedons are not uh, papules comedons are actually tent shaped lesions like this with the black dot here so comedons by definition are acuminate they are tent shaped with a pointed tip okay so they are not papules they are slightly raised we they are a special lesion we don't call them papules okay when you talk about special lesions in dermatology comedon is one of them it is not a primary or a secondary lesion it is another thing on its own and it is the primary thing that you see in acne now just remember treatment of choice for comedonal acne topical retinoids tretinoin and adapalene the next thing that we have is the nodulocystic acne which is the most severe type of acne here you see patient has these big big red nodulocystic lesions treatment of choice oral retinoids that is isotretinoin so this is the treatment of choice for nodulocystic acne now if you see this patient's photo you see this patient has comedons he has papules and pustules and he has nodulocystic lesions also what is this called as having multiple types of lesions at the same time these are polymorphic lesions so acne by definition has polymorphic lesions very important tell me one other disease which has polymorphic lesions tell me one other disease which has polymorphic lesions one more disease which has polymorphic is varicella very good so one more disease with polymorphic is varicella no we absolutely don't give steroids in acne do not ever mark that answer then with oral isotretinoin the dose is 1 mg per kg per day then total cumulative dose has been asked from you this is 120 to 150 mg per kg a very important side effect is teratogenicity this question has been asked multiple times in your exam the most important side effect of oral retinoids is teratogenicity there has to be a gap of one month between stopping the drug and planning the pregnancy so here what you have to remember the dose 1 mg yes pleomorphic is same as polymorphic so 1 mg per kg per day oral isotretinoin dose to be given total cumulative dose 120 to 150 mg per kg very important side effect that you have to remember teratogenicity of course you read in pharma that it can increase the triglycerides it can cause deranged lfts these are some of the side effects but the one that you have to remember for your exam is teratogenicity now this was the question that was asked in the neat 2023 exam so this is just one thing that you should know this is called as hormonal acne if a girl has features suggestive of hyperandrogenism like irregular menses infertility hirsutism more acne more hair in the beard area of the face this is all called as hormonal acne and you have to evaluate the patient for hormonal problems so you have to evaluate for hyperandrogenism how do you know there is hirsutism and there is acne in the lower part of the face plus there is irregular menses okay so this is hormonal acne next we come to rosacea <coughs> rosacea will be generally a middle aged lady who will present with redness papules and pustules on the face affecting the convexities so these are the convexities of the face okay so these are the convexities of the face on which the patient has lesions now how do you identify rosacea from acne very important if you get such an image how do you identify rosacea from acne first of all 
very very important rosacea does not have comedons so a very important difference is that rosacea does not have comedons that is the difference from acne now how do you identify rosacea from the malar rash which we see in SLE? This is generally there in a lot of questions. How do you identify rosacea from SLE? Just see here. In rosacea, the convexities are involved. There are papules, there are pustules. On the other hand, in malar rash, this is the nose. The rash starts from the cheeks goes from the bridge of the nose to the other area so here it is the bridge of the nose which is involved and it is a bilateral symmetrical rash called as butterfly rash and a lot of patients don't have papules pustules also in it this is just plain redness so that is the difference between rosacea and sle See again, I'll show you the image when we talk about SLE's image. In SLE, rash will start from the cheek through the bridge of the nose to the other cheek. There will be just redness, no papules, no pustules and the tip will not be involved. On the other hand, in rosacea, it is the tip which is involved. Nasolabial will be spared in both. Nasolabial is spared in both SLE and rosacea so that is not the way to differentiate you have to look at the nose the nose is going to tell you the answer here okay then we come to rhinophyma very important image based question here rhinophyma is a potato like tumor of the nose develops in long-standing patients with rosacea very important image when you see that the nose is disfigured it looks like a potato Next we come to bacterial infections, very very important non bullous impetigo caused by streptococcus, beautiful golden yellow honey colored crusting generally seen in children on the face An important complication PSG. So see this question has been asked twice in your exams in the 2020 exam they gave an image of impetigo and they asked what is the complication complication is PSGN. How do you identify in the image? You see this beautiful golden yellow honey colored crust. Name of the bacteria that you have to remember? Streptococcus pyogenes. This is non bullous impetigo. Then we have bullous impetigo. This one is caused by Staph aureus. Here we have bulle filled with pus. So here we have bulle filled with pus. The name itself is telling us bullous impetigo means there will be bulle and since this is a bacterial infection it will have pus in it. So bulle filled with pus. Now this bacteria produces a toxin which damages desmoglein 1 in the skin leads to formation of subcorneal bulle. This they will not ask you don't worry you don't have to remember but this is a question that is asked with respect to Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome which I will just tell you. Here if you want to skip remembering you can skip. Then we come to erysipel and cellulitis. In the August 2020 exam they asked us what is the causative organism of erysipela. So remember erysipela is caused by streptococcus pyogenes. Affects the dermal lymphatics you get a painful red lesion which has a definite margin so there is a painful red lesion which has a definite margin remember it affects the dermal lymphatics on the other hand cellulitis is an infection of the fat loose swelling without any margins so this is the difference between erysipela and cellulitis causative organism for erysipela streptococcus is a pyq so you have to absolutely remember it then we come to staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. This was asked as an image in the 2019 exam. Here you will have a baby who will present with generalized peeling of the skin without any mucosal involvement. So remember in staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, baby with peeling of skin without any mucosal involvement. Name of the toxin, 
epidermolytic toxin that's it nobody is going to ask you anything here other than that so when you see this image you see that there is a generalized peeling of skin all over the body of the child without any mucosal involvement very very important without any mucosal involvement this is the staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome <coughs> am i clear till now we are almost one hour into the class am i clear most of the time of the class is taken up by these alopecias and infections because that is also the majority of the questions that they ask you in the exam can i increase the speed a little bit more if i write less and i speak more will that be fine for all of you okay <coughs> subcutaneous fat is absolutely not involved in erysipela please remember erysipela is just an infection of dermal lymphatics fat is seen in cellulitis not in erysipela then we come to follicular pyodermas in follicular pyodermas superficial infection is called as folliculitis what they asked in the 2020 exam is this image of furuncle where you see a big red nodule which is very painful and it has pus pointers so this is a furuncle you may have seen it on yourself you may have seen it on some family members so this is a big red very painful lesion which has pus pointers many a times it breaks down and the pus comes out of it so this is a furuncle in your exam the option was written as follicular abscess so follicular abscess and furuncle are the same thing then lastly what we have is a carbuncle this is generally seen in diabetic patients most common site is the nape of the neck here multiple hair follicles are continuously involved patient is a diabetic high blood sugars immunocompromised infection doesn't stop at one hair it spreads and involves all the hair in that region so this is called as a carbuncle multiple contiguous hair follicles if you get an image of the back of the neck in a diabetic patient the answer is carbuncle okay then we have paronychia this is staphylococcus infection of the nail fold this is what that you have to remember here this is a staphylococcal infection of the nail fold you see redness swelling and pus on the nail fold okay so this is paronychia just remember this is caused by staph aureus this is caused by staph aureus and when you have a staph aureus infection treatment of choice is amoxicillin clavulanic acid okay <coughs> in carbuncle you can give any antibiotic that's not an issue okay with respect to staph infections like this remember the treatment of choice is amoxclav then we have erythrasma this was asked last year in the june exam carbuncle see all follicular pyodermas are caused by staph aureus please remember all of these follicular pyodermas are caused by staph aureus this is the most common cause of these follicular pyodermas understood so these are whether you have folliculitis furuncle carbuncle all of these are caused by staph aureus paronychia is caused by staph aureus then we come to erythrasma erythrasma was asked last year in your exam this is caused by the bacteria which is called as corynebacterium minutissimum this is a commensal it lives in your axilla it lives in my axilla but if i turn a diabetic with uncontrolled blood sugars it can cause a disease which is called as erythrasma patient presents with hyperpigmented scaly rash in the axilla very very important to remember that this is asymptomatic because when you have a scaly rash in the axilla it could be a fungal infection also so how do you differentiate erythrasma from a tinea tinea is itchy so very important to know that erythrasma is not itchy it is asymptomatic what is the next step next step is to do a wood slam in which we see a coral red fluorescence 
So they gave a question like this to you. A patient presented with an asymptomatic steely rash in the axilla. A bedside test showed this image which was the coral red fluorescence. What is the diagnosis? Diagnosis is erythrasma. Remember coral red fluorescence. If you see red color in the underarm, answer is erythrasma. As simple as that. Then we have Lyme disease. This is just a question that comes from micro. Remember the name of the bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi. Vector, Ixodes itch. On the skin, we see ECM. What is ECM? Erythema. Chronicum migrans. So ECM is Erythema chronicum migrans. This is what you see in Lyme disease. Mycobacterial skin questions on their own, they don't ask you these infections so much. But they are always there in the options. So we have TBVC here which is there in a lot of options. Then we have lupus vulgaris here which is there in a lot of options. And then we have scrofuloderma which they have asked once in the 2020 exam. So coming to lupus vulgaris. Lupus vulgaris wherever you read the word vulgaris that is the most common type of that disease. So lupus vulgaris is the most common type of cutaneous TB in adults. What you see here is a reddish brown lesion which has active snake like margins and it has scarring in the center. So remember there is scarring in the center and the margins are active. If you press the lesion with a glass light that test is called as dioscopy and you see apple jelly nodules here. So the most important question that comes from lupus vulgaris is what is the finding on dioscopy that is apple jelly nodules that's it or bas itna yaad rakhna ki lupus vulgaris is a type of skin tb this is not some fancy infection it is a type of skin tuberculosis they will not ask you the image of <coughs> sorry <coughs> throat is bad too much pollution in delhi so throat is very bad now lupus vulgaris is just a type of cutaneous tuberculosis they will not give you the image it will be there in an option so just rule it out and dioscopy shows apple jelly nodules scrofuloderma as an image has been asked in your august 2020 exam this will be seen in a child with multiple discharging sinuses on the neck and these sinuses will have a bluish margin. This is the most important hint that will be given in your exam about scrofuloderma that it will be multiple sinuses and ulcers with a bluish margin. Generally the patient is a child and the lesions are in the neck. So when you see these discharging sinuses and ulcers on the neck with the bluish margin the answer is scrofuloderma. Scrofuloderma is not a cold abscess. Cold abscess is the stage before it forms a scrofuloderma. Because in the cold abscess, you will just have the lymph node which is the abscess. It will be cold to touch, then it will not be very painful. So that is what is called as a cold abscess. Once it ruptures onto the skin, discharges pus here, then there is scrofuloderma on the skin, then it is no longer a cold abscess. Okay. So this is scrofuloderma. Very, very important. This image has been asked in your exam. Just see this again. A child with multiple discharging sinuses on the neck with a bluish margin. Then we come to leprosy. In leprosy, a question on leprosy was asked in the July exam. So it is a very important previous year question. <coughs> leprosy caused by mycobacterium leprae so this is also a mycobacterium infection this is caused by a bacteria called as mycobacterium leprae on the skin it causes lesions with sensory loss so if you get a skin lesion with sensory loss the answer is leprosy no doubt in that then the nerves may be enlarged with sensory or motor loss and if you make a smear from the skin bacteria will be positive. So what are the three cardinal features? A skin lesion with sensory loss, thickened nerves 
and bacteria in the smear. Any one of them in the patient is equal to a diagnosis of leprosy. So any one of these is equal to diagnosis of a leprosy. Now depending upon the different types of leprosy, what is the classification? Classification is called as the Ridley Jopling classification. So as per Ridley Jopling classification, there are five different types. The ones that are important for the exam include tuberculoid, which is actually the hypopigmented skin lesion with sensory loss, which was a question in your July exam. Also remember leprosy is called as Hansen's. So if you get this kind of a word in your option, Hansen's means leprosy. So don't confuse it with any other disease. Hansen's means leprosy. Skin lesion with sensory loss is leprosy. Borderline, borderline, beautiful ring-shaped lesions. These ring-shaped lesions are called as annular lesions. Is the screen back now? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when we talk about leprosy, we'll start from leprosy. These are the cardinal features. You'll have a skin lesion with sensory loss. Then there will be a nerve enlargement and there may be bacteria in the skin. When we talk about the ridley joplin classification, the important points that you have to remember is if there is a hypopigmented skin lesion with sensory loss, it is leprosy. Another name for leprosy is Hansen's disease. So, when you get this option in the exam, it just means leprosy. Then in the borderline, borderline leprosy, you get these beautiful ring-shaped lesions. So, when you have these ring-shaped lesions, they are also called as annular lesions. So, another name for borderline, borderline leprosy is annular leprosy. So, when you see such an image, can you make out the rings here? Can you make out the rings? So, this is borderline, borderline leprosy then in lepromatous leprosy what you get is glove and stocking anesthesia so one thing you have to remember is where do you see glove and stocking anesthesia this we see in lepromatous leprosy and we get a typical facies which is called as leonine facies this was an image based question in the december 2020 exam in the leonine facies the eyebrows are gone which is called as madurosis the nose bridge is collapsed, which is saddle nose. The ear is sagging, which is the Buddha ear. Okay, so this is lepromatous leprosy, also called as leonine facies. This was the image given in your exam. So if you get this kind of an image, this is LL leprosy. Just remember LL leprosy or LL Hansen's. This is what will be written in your exam. And one important point with respect to LL leprosy is you see glove and stocking anesthesia here. So you see glove and stocking anesthesia here. <coughs> Most common nerve involved, ulnar nerve, which is the first sensation to go thermal. So most common nerve is ulnar nerve. Most common sensation which is the first sensation to go is the thermal sensation and now for biopsy radial cutaneous nerve so these are the important points that you need to remember with respect to nerve involvement in leprosy cup and saucer appearance geographic map appearance swiss cheese appearance all of this is borderline borderline leprosy but you know they have moved beyond these questions at one time if you go back and see the 2010 to 15 you know those old type of questions this used to be a favorite back there but no longer yes one question i've got is how to differentiate ll leprosy not from leishmaniasis we have to differentiate this from pkdl 
which is post colors are dermal le leishmaniasis this is also seen in somebody living in Bihar but there may be a history of fever in the childhood there will be lesions all over the body like you get in LA leprosy but there is no sensory loss so very important difference of PKDL from LA leprosy is that there is no sensory loss here that is how you differentiate it from leprosy okay for you for all practical purposes wherever there is a sensory loss it is leprosy clear i will say that again and again because they have asked this question in just this previous exam treatment of choice mbmdt kit three drugs dapson rifampicin clofazamine you can remember it as the mnemonic dcr there is dapson again screen gone No worries, it will come back. Don't worry, don't worry. I am reading your messages. Is it fine now? It wants to give you small, small breaks in between. Nah? Don't get worried. <coughs> These are... <coughs> Again gone, it is again wanting to give you a little break. It's okay, we'll chill, we'll revise. Agya, ab agya. Yes. So, treatment of choice is MBMDT kit. 6 months to PB patient, 12 months to MB patient if you get such an image. You see that this is a red blister pack. So this is a red blister pack. You see red and white tablets in it. So it's a red blister pack with red and white tablets in it. And 6 months to PB patient, 12 months to MB patient as simple as that. Then we come to reactions in leprosy. This question has been asked in the FMG exam as well. When you get reactions in leprosy, this was also asked in the FMG exam, I think in 2022. So when a patient of leprosy on treatment can develop type 1, can develop type 2. In type 1, generally see it in borderline patients, BT, BB and BL. We see it in borderline group. Redness and swelling on the leprosy lesion. So, there will be a redness and swelling on the leprosy lesions. In type 2, there will be multiple small red painful nodules all over the body. These are called as ENN, erythma nodosum, leprosum. So, these are multiple red painful nodules that we see all over the body. Along with this, patient may have fever, arthralgia, hepatitis, orchitis, uveitis. So, LA leprosy can involve the entire body. So, type 2 reaction can involve the entire body. So, here you see red painful nodules all over the body along with fever, joint pains, liver, eye, testes, everything can be involved. So, this is the difference between type 1 and type 2 leprosy reaction. Whatever is the diagnosis, treatment includes continuation of MBMDT and starting steroids that is prednisolone. Another drug that can be given in type 2 reaction is thalidomide. This is a very good drug but it is not the drug of choice why because it is extremely teratogenic when you can't give it in half the population you can't give it in women so easily it cannot be the drug of choice so very important to remember that thalidomide is not the drug of choice drug of choice is steroids it is just another drug that can be given in 
type 2 reaction. Is this clear to everybody type 1 versus type 2? In type 1 there will be redness and swelling on the leprosy lesion. In type 2 there will be new lesions all over the body. These lesions are called as ENL, erythema nodosum leprosum. This is what you were wanting to ask. Post colors are dermal leishmaniasis. There will be multiple lesions all over the body but the most important difference is there is no nerve thickening, no sensory loss, treatment of choice, multifossing. So this is a question from pharmacology. What is the treatment that you give in post colors are dermal leishmaniasis? It is multifossing. It is the only oral drug that you give in leishmaniasis. <coughs> multifossing. So we have finished with the bacterial infections. We now come to the fungal infections. It is 9.30 right now. I don't think we will finish before 11.30. So for all of you who were asking initially till when will the class go on, I will tell you at least 11.30. So starting with fungal infections, a very important fungal infection here is pityriasis versicolor caused by the fungus Malassezia globosa or Malassezia furfur. Here what you get is multiple hypopigmented scaly macules on the upper back and the upper chest. So remember what we see here are multiple hypopigmented scaly macules on the upper back and the upper chest. <coughs> very, very important image. Very important image. Malassezia furfur. This question has been asked from you. They gave you an image and they asked you the causative organism. Causative organism, Malassezia. Upper back, upper chest, hypopigmented scaly macules. Next investigation is always a KOH mount in which we see the spaghetti and the meatball appearance. So in the KOH, we see the spaghetti and the meatball appearance, also called as banana and grape appearance. Wood slab P versicolor shows a pale yellow fluorescence. So PV shows a PY color. P, P versicolor, pale yellow fluorescence. Drug of choice are azoles. Can also give selenium sulfide. But very important to remember is what you cannot give. What we cannot give is risiofulvin and terbinafil because they don't work on yeast. So you cannot give this here. Risiofulvin and terbinafil cannot be prescribed in pityriasis versi color. KOH shows a spaghetti meatball appearance. Then we have oral candidiasis. In oral candidiasis, where you see this white pseudomembrane in the oral cavity, this is called as acute pseudomembranous candidiasis, also called as oral thrush. So this is acute pseudomembranous candidiasis, also called as oral thrush. What you see here is white pseudomembrane. What is the important characteristic of this pseudomembrane? It can be rubbed off. So this can be rubbed off. This is oral thrush. Then candidial intertrigo, they don't generally ask. It's okay. Then we come to tenia. A very, very, very important question. With respect to tenia, remember that this is caused by dermatophytes. The most common cause is trichophyton rubra. So most common cause is trichophyton rubrum. This will be a red ring shaped lesion with scalings, vesicles and most importantly this is itchy. So tenia characteristically is itchy. It will be a red ring shaped lesion. Ring is also called as annular. So a red annular plaque with scalings, vesicles and pustules and it is extremely itchy. So this is very very important most common cause trichophyton rubrum. Please see this image. You have to know how to identify this. This will be a typical red ring shaped lesion. In Hindi it is called as dad. 
when tinea happens in the groin area it is called as crurus so when it happens in the groin area it is called as crurus also called as dhobi itch or jock itch imagine the times when this used to be a favorite fmg exam dhobi itch is answer tinea crurus then tinea crurus is also called as dhobi itch so this was like a question asked almost every alternate exam yes these were the times as well now this is tinea crurus dhobi itch jock itch tinea of the groin tinea of the pedis is called as athlete's foot most common site fourth toe rib most common site fourth toe rib tinea pedis also called as athlete's foot next we come to tinea incognito which was a question asked in your july 2023 exam if a patient of an tinea applies over the counter drugs which are generally steroids it tends to reduce the redness and the itching but as the patient stops the steroid it all comes back so it all comes back but because steroids will reduce the redness they will reduce the scaling you may or may not be able to identify the lesion when the patient comes to you which is why it is called as tinea incognito so this is called as tinea incognito very very important steroid modified tinea when you see the lesion it may not show you the typical red ring which we saw here it will be a slightly modified lesion so this is incognito it's difficult to identify this is tinea incognito very very important because it has just been asked then we have tinea unguam which is yellow a brown discoloration of the nail so when you see a yellow brown discoloration of the nail this is tinea unguam there can be scaling present under the nail also this is called as subungual hyperkeratosis this as an image has been asked in the fmg 21 exam so when you see scaling under the nail this is called as subungual hyperkeratosis how do you differentiate onychomycosis from nail psoriasis how do you identify onychomycosis from nail psoriasis who can tell me in nail psoriasis pitting is present in onychomycosis there is no pitting so very very important in onychomycosis there is no pitting <coughs> treatment of choice for all tinnas is terpenafin except who will tell me the except treatment of choice for all tinnas is terpenafin except except tinea capitis where drug of choice is griseofulvin for all other tinias it is terpenafin then for fingernail we use pulse therapy with itraconazole these are just some one words which you need to know okay so for nail pulse therapy itraconazole drug of choice terpenafin that's it tinea versicolor is actually a misnomer it is not tinea tinea as a word you use when the infection is caused by dermatophytes Pityriasis versicolor is not caused by dermatophyte. So calling it tinea versicolor is an old name. It's not tinea. It is pityriasis versicolor. Next we come to the subcutaneous mycosis where we have the first thing which is sporotrichosis. This is caused by the fungi sporotrich shenkai seen in gardeners entry through rose thorn so this is also called as rose gardener's disease where the fungus enters the first nodule develops here and then the infection travels up along the lymphatics the infection travels up along the lymphatics so when you see linear nodules on the leg of a farmer or a gardener the answer is 
sporotrichosis. Okay, this all we don't need to know. The answer is sporotrichosis. As in, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> As an image, this is a very important uh, differential diagnosis also. So, when you see linear nodules on the leg of a farmer, this is sporotrichosis. Causative fungus, sporothrix shenkai, treatment of choice, itroconazole. Okay, treatment of choice, itroconazole. Then we have chromoblastomycosis. Very, very favorite. Asked in the FMG exam also in the July 22 exam. For chromoblastomycosis, what you have to remember, C for chromo, C for cauliflower-like nodules and C for copper penny bodies. So, there are three C's that you have to remember here. In chromoblastomycosis, we get these cauliflower-like nodules on the skin and in the histopath, we get copper penny bodies. That's it. C, C and C. Chromoblastomycosis, cauliflower-like lesions copper penny bodies. This is what you have to remember. Also called as medullar bodies, also called as sclerotic bodies. These are all brown brown colored yeast. So basically what you see is brown yeast in the histopath. Clear to everyone, sporotrichosis, linear nodules, chromoblastomycosis, cauliflower like lesions, and then comes the favorite look at the red boxes here look at the red boxes how many times this question has been asked 21 22 and 23 it is their favorite question this is mycetoma you mycetoma when it is caused by a fungus actinomycetoma when it is caused by a bacteria Generally seen in a farmer on the foot caused due to a penetration trauma. So mostly in your exam, it is going to be farmers as your questions for subcutaneous mycosis because the entry happens through a plant or a wood matter and farmers are most exposed to it. So here also it will be a farmer with a lesion on the foot. What do you see? You see this typical triad. This triad was asked in the 2020 20 December FMG exam. They asked the triad that we see in mycetoma. A painless swelling with sinuses with discharge containing grains. So if you see this image, it will be a painless swelling on the foot of a farmer with multiple discharging sinuses and it will contain grains. This image is clear, mycetoma versus chromoblastomycosis versus sporotrichosis. Are these all clear to you? Sporotrichosis, linear nodules, chromoblastomycosis, cauliflower-like lesions and mother of foot will be a swelling. So these are the three different subcutaneous mycosis. Almost always all of them are present in the options together. So you should know how to differentiate. Or in case I think fourth option which has been asked in multiple exams is TBVC. Remember tuberculosis jahan pe aa gaya, wahan pe ye TB hai. It is not a fungal infection. So this will also be seen in a farmer but it will be a single body plaque. So just remember TBVC un ki tarah nahi dikhta. It doesn't look like scrofalo, cauliflower or mycetoma. It is different. This will be a single small lesion with a rough surface. Absent, nobody is going to ask you TBVC in an image. So you don't even need to remember the image. But you just need to know what it is. So that you can chuck it out from your options. And then with sporotrichosis. They give this. If they want to ask sporotrichosis. They will give this in the option. Which is fish tank granuloma. This is caused by a atypical mycobacteria. So this is a atypical mycobacteria that is mycobacterium marinum. Marinum word means water. So this is an infection which has water in its name. 
fish tank granuloma swimming pool granuloma here also you will see multiple nodules in a lymphoid pattern but how do you differentiate this from sporotrichosis you look at the occupation of the patient if it is related to water the answer is m marinum if the patient is a farmer or a gardener the answer is sporotrichosis understood understood the difference between sporotrichosis and fish tank granuloma Yes, botryomycosis is seen on the foot, but uh, they generally don't give you botryomycosis in the options also, neither in the image. Botryomycosis is caused by staph aureus. It is also a DD of mycetoma, but this is caused by staph aureus. Next, we come to viral infections, where we have the first thing that is herpes labialis. This is caused by HSV1, herpes simplex virus one so this is caused by hsv1 what you have wherever the word herpes comes we will have multiple grouped vesicles on a red base so wherever the word herpes comes there you will have multiple grouped vesicles on a red base if it is on the lips the answer is herpes labialis okay so when you have multiple grouped vesicles on the lips the answer is herpes labialis and the virus lies latent in the trigeminal ganglion from where it can come back and cause the disease again and again. So multiple vesicles on red base of course all herpetic infections are painful. So they are all painful. See when you have these vesicles on the lips it is called as herpes labialis. When you have it on the genitalia, it is called as herpes genitalis. And when these vesicles are present in a dermatomal pattern, this is called as herpes zoster. So when you have grouped vesicles on red base, depending upon the site, you have the diagnosis. Herpes labialis caused by HSV1, herpes genitalis caused by HSV2, and herpes zoster caused by varicella zoster virus. Understood everyone? Is this image clear? In all of these, the lesions will be this. <coughs> then varicella zoster virus causes varicella. In the child, when it first enters the body, there will be multiple vesicles all over the body then it will go and lie latent in the dorsal nerve root ganglion and when it comes back this will cause herpes zoster in a dermatomal pattern okay so it is the same virus which causes varicella and it causes herpes zoster lies latent in the dorsal nerve root ganglion so this is a concept that you have to know now, varicella, see the lal dabbe. See the red boxes. Caused by varicella zoster virus, what you have is a child with fever with vesicles. So, a child with fever with vesicles all over the body. This is varicella. Okay? This is varicella. The rash is typically having a centripetal distribution. This was asked in your July 23 exam also. So please remember this is a very important PYQ. The question said a three-year-old child presented with fever and a generalized vesicular rash. Brother also has similar complaints. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is chickenpox or varicella. Classically in varicella, the rash is pleomorphic or polymorphic. And the vesicle is present on a red surface which is called as dew drop or a rose petal appearance. In herpes zoster also called as shingles, we get these multiple painful grouped vesicles on a red base in a 
dermatomal distribution. They are always unilateral, they are always dermatomal, most common site is thoracic. So when you get this kind of an image, you see that the lesions are present in a line. They are dermatomal. This is herpes zoster. Zang smear from all of these shows multinucleate giant cells. Wherever you are making it, the Zang smear is going to show multinucleate giant cells. Okay, you see these lobulated nuclei here. These are all MNGs that we see in herpes zoster. <coughs> Treatment of choice, acyclovir. For all of these, Treatment of choice is acyclovir. With CMV, remember it has inclusion bodies which are called as aula inclusion bodies. HHV6 causes a disease called as roseola infantum or exanthem subitum. This just has a red rash. There are no vesicles here. This was there in your option. In the varicella question. So remember roseola infantum or exanthem subitum from HHV6. Also remember another name for this which is sixth disease. So HHV6 causes sixth disease. Here we just get a red rash. We don't get any vesicles. Then HHV8 causes Kaposi sarcoma which is a vascular tumor. You get reddish purple lesions. So all that you have to remember is HHV8 has a role in causing Kaposi sarcoma, generally seen in patients suffering from HIV AIDS. Okay, generally seen in patients suffering from HIV AIDS. Then we have molluscum caused by mollusky pox virus. Pearly white dome shaped papules with a central umbilication on the skin. So when you have these papules from the side, they are dome shaped. Central umbilication means there is a small dip. When you see from the top, it looks like this. Like the umbilicus on the trunk, that is how the umbilicated lesions of mollusca. There will be a small dip in the center. So pearly white dome shaped papules with central umbilication sometimes these lesions may be present in a line this is called as pseudocobnus phenomena inclusion bodies are called as henderson peterson bodies this is the largest virus these are the largest inclusion bodies henderson peterson bodies remember this is a very important name that you have to know question from microbiology as well henderson Peterson bodies seen in molluscum, owl eye bodies seen in CMV infections. Next we come to viral warts. Viral warts are caused by the human papilloma virus. So warts are caused by human papilloma virus. They also show the phenomena of pseudocomnus where you will see multiple warts in a line here also you see multiple warts in a line this is the pseudocomnus phenomena where these are flat lesions they are called as veruca plana where these are raised lesions they are called as veruca <coughs> vulgaris basically wherever you read the word veruca or what in dermatology it means a rough surface so these lesions tend to have a rough surface. Okay, so this is HPV that causes Veruca vulgaris. Then we have hand, foot and mouth disease which is caused by Coxsackie A16 virus or Enterovirus 71. Here we have a child with painful vesicles only on hand, foot and mouth disease. So, <coughs> 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 
चाइल्ड विथ फीवर विथ वेसिकल्स ऑल ओवर द बॉडी वेरिसला ऑन हैंड फुट एंड माउथ दिस इज हैंड फुट एंड माउथ डिसीज एज सिंपल एज दैट इफ सच काइंड ऑफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स सो हैंड फुट एंड माउथ इट इज एच एफ एम डी इफ इट इज ऑल ओवर द बॉडी इट इज वेरी सेला एच एफ एम डी इज कॉस्ड बाय कॉक्साकी ए सिक्सटीन वायरस ओके पैरो वायरस बी नाइनटीन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ट्वाइस इट हेज बीन आस्ट इन द लास्ट फोर इयर्स इट कॉजेस ए प्लास्टिक क्राइसिस इन अ पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम सिकल सेल एनीमिया इफ अ मदर गेट्स द इन्फेक्शन इट कैन कॉज पीटल हाई ड्रॉप्स इन द बेबी एंड इन अ चाइल्ड इट कैन कॉज अ डिसीज विच इज कॉल्ड एज एरिदमा इन्फेक्शियोसम ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फिफ्थ डिसीज द चाइल्ड हैज अ रेड ब्रैश ऑन बोथ द चीक्स this is called as slapped cheek appearance so this is called as a slapped cheek appearance very important image for your exam in both the questions in 2019 and 21 this was asked as an image based question so when you see a gandhi ji ka bhakt baby one thappad on the cheek followed by a thappad on the second cheek so both the cheeks are red okay my dear student if you attend the class today you are doing all the five year pyqs every pyq of the last five year is being discussed in the class today so this is a slapped cheek appearance what is the name of the disease erythema infecciosum also called as fifth disease then we come to parasitic infections no it doesn't affect the cheek it starts with the cheek and then you have rash all over the body okay so it is not limited to the cheek it can affect all the body and we come to scabies Caused by the mite Sarcoptes scabiae var hominis. Question says there will be complaint of nocturnal pruritus. Other family members may be suffering from similar disease. Patient will present with multiple papules, which are itchy in the finger webs. So itchy papules in the finger webs. This is going to be the typical complaint. see the image of the mite this has been asked as an image this is an old question 2018 19 where they have given you an image of the mite when you see this is a round to ovoid body and the mite has four pairs of legs 1 2 3 and 4 this mite has four pairs of legs round gray colored structure patient presents with itchy papules and the finger webs very important image based question what is the pathognomonic lesion it's a burrow in the skin it is present at the level of stratum corneum so burrow is present at the level of stratum corneum treatment of choice 5% permethrin oral drug ivermectin okay oral drug ivermectin yes the distribution is circular fibra but they don't generally ask you that so the treatment of choice here is 5% permethrin in the infants again you will get a history of infant having exudative lesions all over the body then there may be other family members who may have a similar disease and uh what is the most important lesion that we get in infantile scabies what is the most important lesion that we get in infantile scabies you have these vesiculopustular rash on the palms and soles so vesiculopustular rash on the palms and soles this is a very important hint towards diagnosis of infantile scabies then norwegian scabies seen in patients suffering from aids it is the most severe type of 
scabies. So Norwegian scabies is seen in patients of AIDS and sometimes in genital lesions you may see more of nodules. So nodular scabies is just another name for genital scabies. These are all some of the previous year questions that have been asked. Next is the papa and the dadda and everything is very very important STDs every year every exam at least one question sometimes even two three questions from STDs are asked in STDs the first thing that we have to know is the genital ulcer disease when we talk about genital ulcer disease these are the five important causes of genital ulcer but when you get a question on genital ulcer the first thing that you have to do is identify in the question whether it is a painless or a painful ulcer if it is painless answer is syphilis or donovanosis if it is painful it is chancroid or herpes okay so the first thing that you have to do in a patient suffering from genital ulcer in a question is whether it is painless or painful painless ulcer syphilis will generally be described as a painless indurated ulcer with a bilateral painless inguinal lymph node enlargement donovanosis will be a description of beefy red painless ulcer there is no lymph node here <coughs> in the painful Chancroid will be multiple painful ulcers with a painful suppurative lymph nodes. Genital herpes will be grouped vesicles. Okay, so this is how you approach a question of genital ulcer. First thing, painless. In painless, look for lymph nodes. If there is lymph node involvement, the answer is syphilis. If there is no lymph node involvement, the answer is donovanosis. As simple as that. Then we come to the painful ulcers, multiple ulcers with painful suppurative lymph node, chancroid. Vesicles is herpes. Okay, is this approach clear to all of you? Is this approach clear to all of you? good then we come to primary syphilis in primary syphilis this is caused by treponema pallidum incubation period 9 to 90 days when you look at the ulcer this will be a beautiful single well defined ulcer with a clean surface so a painless indurated ulcer with a clean surface with bilateral painless inguinal lymph nodes very very important painless ulcer painless lymph node is syphilis dark ground microscopy is the investigation that you do treatment of choice injection benzathine penicillin so treatment of choice injection benzathine penicillin investigation <coughs> dark ground microscopy understood everyone then we have donovanosis here it will be a single beefy red ulcer. It is velvety red. It bleeds on touch. But remember there is no lymph node involvement. But there is another thing that you need to remember. You see a pseudo bubo here. So where is pseudo bubo seen? That is seen in donovanosis. Favorite question of the FMG exam 2010 to 16. Very, very, very important. So this is donovanosis. Please don't ask me important topics in dermatology. Till now, everything that I've told you is being asked in the last four years. We have hardly 10 topics in dermatology. We have eight questions. So there is a chance of one question coming from each topic in every exam. Okay. So this is not like a huge subject. Very less topics. So very less, you know, uh, important topics here. All topics are important. So this is pseudo bubo. You see donovanosis. Scabies may adults may faces not involved in children faces involved. Okay, clear. 
Donovanosis BC is pseudo bubo. We see Donovan bodies on the stain. That's it. You don't need to know the treatment of choice. They don't ask you the treatment of choice. Chancroid is caused by the bacteria Haemophilus ducreae. So, chancroid is caused by the bacteria Haemophilus ducreae. Everything of syphilis is opposite here. Multiple painful ulcers with a yellow slough. So, the ulcer looks yellow. That is why the lymph nodes also are yellow. They are painful and suppurative lymph nodes means they are full of pus. So, multiple painful ulcers with painful lymph nodes. This is chancroid railroad track appearance on gram stain. Again, they don't ask you the treatment here. Only where you know have to know the treatment is syphilis which is benzathine penicillin. So, this is chancroid. Herpes will be multiple grouped vesicles on a red base. Finding nucleate giant cells. Treatment of choice acyclovir. Lymphogranuloma venerium they don't ask you. Just need to remember where is group sign of green blood seen. This is seen in LGV. So this is all that you need to remember here. This is LGV. Group sign of green blood. You don't see any ulcer here. You only see bubo. What is the meaning of bubo? Painful suppurative lymph nodes. So, no ulcer, just a bubo. This is the difference from chancroid. In chancroid, we were seeing ulcer plus lymph node. Here, we don't see any ulcer. And what we see is the group sign of green blood. Then this question has been asked before, where is esthiomene seen? Esthiomene is also seen in FMGV. Okay, when I am talking about specific questions, I am only talking about the FMG questions here. So, esthiomene has been asked once. This is seen in LGV. <coughs> secondary syphilis, very, very, very favorite of the FMG exam. In secondary syphilis, Typical lesion and the typical image that you get in the exam is this where there are coppery brown macules on the palms and soles. So, coppery brown macules on the palms and soles with condyloma later on the genitalia is equal to secondary syphilis. Condyloma later, later in Hindi means sleeping. So, these are flat lesions which you see on the genitalia in secondary syphilis. So, this is condyloma later. You have to know how to differentiate condyloma later from condyloma acuminata. I will show you that also. Condyloma acuminata is another name for genital warts while condyloma later is seen in secondary syphilis. So, do not confuse between these two. Leta is seen here. Acuminata is seen in genital warts. In tertiary syphilis on the skin, we see gamma. In the cardiovascular lesions, this question has been asked in 2018. What is the part of aorta that is involved? It is ascending aorta. So, what is the part of aorta that is involved? Ascending aorta. And in neurosyphilis, what we see? Tabes dorsalis. So, these are all, see, you see, you see multiple things. But what is important for your exam is this. On the skin, we see gamma. In the CVS, there is involvement of ascending aorta. And in neurosyphilis, you have to remember tabes dorsalis, which is involvement of the posterior tracts of the spinal cord. Okay, so this is tertiary syphilis. Then we have the urethral discharge. This was a question <coughs> asked in the FMG exam as well.
in terms of urethritis, we have gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis. Gonococcal is caused by Neisseria gonorrhoeae. A pus discharge from the urethra is equal to gonococcal. Okay. While non-gonococcal most common causes chlamydia trichomatis, here we get a mucoid discharge. Okay. So, gonococcal is pus and non-gonococcal is a mucoid discharge. Then you see the red boxes here, which is anal genital wards. Just look at the red boxes here. How many times this question has been asked? Anogenital warts, remember A for anogenital, A for acuminator. So, another name for anogenital warts is condyloma acuminator, most commonly caused by HPV 6. <coughs> when you see this as an image, you see these multiple warts on the genitalia. They tend to have a rough surface with pointed tips, which is why it is called as acuminator. Remember 611 are the low risk types but the most common is HPV 6. Then imicumod is used here but in pregnancy we use cryotherapy and TCA. Okay, in pregnancy we use cryotherapy and TCA. Um, genital discharges, vaginal discharges is that covered in OBS gynae? Is this covered in OBS gynae? Can we move ahead of this? And syndromic management also, is that being covered in community medicine? Okay, so we'll uh, move to the next topic which is papillosquamous disorders. We'll take a break of 5 minutes and then we'll rejoin. It is... Um, exactly a five minute break okay ist 10:09. so we'll meet at 10 15 ist here pm not a okay so we'll take a small break
Hello everyone, are you all back? Okay, so yes, so coming to papillosquamous disorders. So coming to papillosquamous disorders, in papillosquamous disorders, the most important one that we have to know is psoriasis. In psoriasis, remember the HLA, genetic association with HLA. <clears throat> is the audio and the video clear to everyone? Clear the audio? Remember the HLA CW6 in psoriasis and B27 in psoriatic arthritis. Then there are some drugs which can exacerbate psoriasis. Those drugs can be remembered by the mnemonic FLAB. These drugs can be remembered by the mnemonic FLAB. Painkillers, lithium, antimalarials and beta blockers. So what is the most important here are these two HLAs. Drugs, they don't ask you as much. <coughs> it is still okay if you remember it. PLAB, painkillers, lithium, antimalarials and beta blockers. Now, we come to how does a psoriatic lesion look like. This is a well defined red plaque with silvery white scaling. So, it is a well defined red plaque with silvery white scaling and when you see this kind of a pallor around these psoriatic lesions, this is called as the ring of Warnoff. Scratching a psoriatic lesion with a glass slide, the test is called as Grittage test and as you scratch, scratch and scratch, eventually we see this pinpoint red bleeding in the psoriatic lesion which is called as Ospitz sign. So, very important auspit sign. Where is it seen? Psoriasis. Warnoff ring? Psoriasis. Silvery white scaling? Psoriasis. So, these are the three important named things that you have to remember here. Then another phenomena that we see in psoriasis is called as coldness phenomena, also called as isomorphic phenomena, where we see lesions at sites of trauma. So, we see lesions at sites of trauma. Here, if you see, you will see these linear lesions. Wherever a question wants you to diagnose coldness, it is linear. It will always be linear because it is along a trauma, it is along a scratch line. So, you see these red plugs with silvery white scaling and they are in the form of lines. So, these are called as coldness phenomena. True coveness phenomena seen in autoimmune diseases, remember by name here, Pallavi. So, P, psoriasis, L, lichen planus and V, vitiligo. So, P, L, V, these are the causes of true coveness phenomena. On the other hand, we have pseudo coveness phenomena, which we read when we were doing the viral infections, molluscum and viral warts. So, true, co <coughs> true coveness, P, L, V, pseudo coveness, molluscum and viral warts. Everywhere coveness means the lesions are in a line. Is that clear to everybody? Coveness phenomena. The question in the FMG June 2022 exam was coveness is seen in all except. So for that all except you have to remember these three causes and everything else is except. Then gutate psoriasis seen in children after a streptococcal infection. There are multiple small 
psoriatic lesions over the back of the child. This is gutted psoriasis. Since it follows a streptococcal pharyngitis, treatment of choice is antibiotics here. Okay, so this is gutted psoriasis. Then we have pus for psoriasis. Happens due to a sudden withdrawal of systemic steroids. Patient develops multiple pustules all over the body. They may join each other to form what is called as lakes of pus. Drug of choice, acetretin. So, pustular psoriasis, what is the other name for pustular psoriasis? Von Zumbush disease. So, what is the other name for pustular psoriasis? This is also called as Von Zumbush disease. The question will say, patient is a known case of psoriasis, was taking treatment from a local practitioner, suddenly stopped the treatment, developed pustules all over the body. What is the diagnosis? Sudden stoppage is what gives you the hint. This is pustular psoriasis treatment of choice, acetretin. What is the category of drug for acetretin? This is an oral retinoid. But remember, this we cannot confuse with isotretinoin. Isotretinoin is separate, acetretin is separate. Isotretinoin is used in acne and acetretin is used in psoriasis. Then we have impetigo or petiformis which is pustular psoriasis of pregnancy. The only thing that you have to remember here is the treatment of choice that is steroids. So, impetigo or petiformis is the only time in psoriasis where steroids can be given. Erythrodermic psoriasis, they never give you the image but this was asked in the options this time. So, erythro means red, dermis means skin. So, this is type of psoriasis where more than 90% of the skin of the patient becomes red. This is erythrodermic psoriasis. <coughs> then the psoriatic histopath is very very important. In the 2021 exam, they gave a lot of questions on the histopath of psoriasis and lichen famous. So this makes it very very important. In histopath of psoriasis, the first finding that you have to remember is parakeratosis, which is presence of nucleated cells in the stratum corneum, then Munro's abscess and Kogoch pustules. Munro's is seen in corneum, Kogoch is seen in spinosum. Both of these are collections of neutrophils and they are seen in psoriasis. So remember Munro's and Kogoch both are seen in psoriasis and both are neutrophilic collections. Stratum granulosum characteristically reduced to absent which is called as hypogranulosis. So again what are the important features of psoriatic histopath? Parakeratosis, Munro's abscess and Kogoch pustules then hypogranulosis. Another thing that we see is that the retiridges are regularly elongated. That is of course there but this is what they generally ask you this is histopath of psoriasis then the question that i was telling you in the december 2020 exam where they gave an image of a nail and they asked you to do the diagnosis so if you see this kind of an irregular pitting on the nail the answer is nail psoriasis so irregular pitting on the nail it is psoriasis it is the most common sign in psoriasis the most specific sign here is the salmon patch or the oil drop sign. So, this is the salmon patch sign which is the most specific sign of psoriasis. These are two important words that you have to remember. Then psoriatic arthritis was a question in the July exam this year. A patient who is a known case of psoriasis can have psoriatic arthritis later in life. Here the patient develops inflammation of the distal interphalangeal joints. Most common joints are the distal interphalangeal joints. The fingers can be swollen which is called as dactylitis. Okay, so distal interphalangeal joints, dactylitis, then the wrist joint can also be inflamed more in patients who are actually B27 positive. This is psoriatic arthritis. Typical deformity on x-ray later in the disease is this. What is this here? What do you see? This is the pencil in cup deformity of psoriatic 
arthritis. So very very important. If a patient of psoriasis develops arthritis, this is psoriatic arthritis for you. <coughs> Treatment, what you have to remember is that the methotrexate is drug of choice for chronic plaque psoriasis and psoriasis with psoriatic arthritis. This was the question that was asked in your December 21 exam. If a patient of psoriasis develops psoriatic arthritis, drug of choice is methotrexate, acid written for pustular psoriasis, steroids for impetigo herpetiformis. Then phototherapy of choice, narrowband UVB can be given. Can you tell me the wavelength of narrowband UVB? What is the wavelength of NB UVB? 311 nanometer. So phototherapy of choice in psoriasis is narrowband UVB. We can also use PUVA therapy which is P plus UVA. So Raleen plus UVA. So PUVA can also be used but treatment of choice is NB UVB. Then we come to lichen planus, very, very, very favorite of the FMG exam, extremely favorite. I have just written Jan 23 year, but this has been asked in 22, it has been asked in 21, it has been asked in 20 in different forms. So very, very important. Lichen planus is a disease which has five P's, even five P's have been asked with you. This is an old question, 2017 or so. But what are the five P's? You have purple, pruritic, polygonal, planar, Papules. So, wherever the word purple comes, purple means violaceous. So, wherever the word purple or violaceous comes, this is called as lichen planus. So, purple polygonal papules, more on the flexures, very itchy, have a lacy stria on the surface, which is called as Wickham's stria. So, everything about LP is important. Remember, purple papules, itchy. Wickham's stria. And what is the sign here where you see multiple lichen planus lesions in a sign? In a line, this is the Kovner's phenomena. So LP has Kovner's phenomena. On the mucosa, again we see a violaceous patch with the lacy reticulate stria. That is a typical finding of mucosal lichen planus. See asked in June as well as December 21 exam. When you just have reticular lesions, they are asymptomatic. But if there is an erosion in the center of this LP lesion, it is called as erosive oral lichen planus. Jahan pe erosion hai, where the skin is eroded, patient will have burning sensation and there is a future risk of squamous cell carcinoma developing. So there are two types of mucosal LP, reticular and erosive. Reticular is asymptomatic while erosive will have burning sensation and there is a future risk of malignancy developing. Please see these images clearly. In lichen planus, purple papules, very, very important image asked in the exam. Then in mucosal LP, you see these fish neck type, lacy reticulate stria. Very, very, very important are these images of LP. Then the histopath of LP, there are two, three important words. Statum granulosum is increased, which is called as hypergranulosis. Then we see civet bodies, interface dermatitis and sore pithing of the retina. These are the important words that we have to remember in the histopath of LP. Hypergranulosis, civet bodies, interface dermatitis and sore pithing of the reti. Very, very, very important. Then in lane lichen planus, it causes a wing-shaped fold here, which is called as pterygium. This is the most specific, most pathognomic sign of nail LP. It is called as pterygium. This is a wing-shaped fold. The word pterygium means wing-shaped and it causes a permanent nail loss. This causes a permanent nail loss. This is a pterygium. So when LP happens in the hair, it causes scarring alopecia. When it happens in the nail, it causes scarring or a permanent loss of the nail. 
see this is the hair which is like in plano filaris. Next we come to pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis means scaling and rosea means red. So here we have red scaly lesions. The first rash that appears on the body is called as mother's patch or a herald patch. After that we get multiple lesions on the back in a Christmas tree pattern. So where is Christmas tree pattern seen? Pityriasis rosea. Yeah. Where is Christmas tree pattern seen? Pityriasis rosea. See this is the typical Christmas tree pattern which you see here very important for images. We see multiple such lesions appearing on the back in a Christmas tree pattern. And when you see this lesion closely, this is a red annular plaque. What is the meaning of annular? It is ring shaped. And you see the scaling. How is this different from psoriasis? In a psoriatic lesion, the scaling was present all over the surface. But in P. rosea, you see that it is only present on the periphery. This is called as a peripheral colorant scaling. So very, very important peripheral colorant scaling is seen in pityriasis rosea. So what are the three words that you have to remember here? Mother's patch, Christmas tree pattern and peripheral colorant of scaling. Then we have the bullous disorders. In the bullous disorders, when we talk about the classification, we divide them into intraepidermal and subepidermal disorders. In the intraepidermal, we have pemphigus, and in the subepidermal, we have pemphigoid. See what is the meaning of intraepidermal? For all those who have never read pemphigus before, intraepidermal means the bulla is within the epidermis and subepidermal means bulla is below the epidermis. So when it is intraepidermal, it is a superficial bulla and when it is subepidermal, it is a deep bulla. How do you remember? S for superficial, S for pemphigus, D for deep, D for pemphigoid. So sir, superficial pemphigus, the deep pemphigoid. Okay, so these are the intraepidermal and the subepidermal disorders. Of course, if a bulla is present in the intraepidermal, it is superficial, so it will become fuss very easily. So, whenever a question says there is a flaccid bulla, that means it is intraepidermal, and when it is deep, it will become very big and tense so these are called as tense bullae so flaccid bullae in pemphigus and tense bullae in pemphigoid that is the most important hint that you have to take <coughs> this is the most important hint that you have to take from the question if it says flaccid bullae pemphigus if it says tense bullae pemphigoid in pemphigus, the target of the autoantibodies are the desmosomes. They are damaged. If you remember from the basics that you may have read, desmosomes are the structures which bind keratinocytes to each other. So desmosomes bind keratinocyte to keratinocyte. When they are broken, the cells will separate and they will become like this. These are called as acantholytic cells okay so these are called as acantholytic cells acantha means cells of the spinous layer lysis means breaking so cells break from each other this is called as acantholysis this is the typical thing that you see in pemphigus then there are two important types of pemphigus which are pemphigus vulgaris and pemphigus fallacious. In both pemphigus vulgaris and fallacious, because they are pemphigus, patient will present with flaccid bullae. But then you have to see the mucosa. If the mucosa is involved, that is, patient will have oral ulcers. The answer is pemphigus vulgaris. If the mucosa is not involved, answer is pemphigus fallacious. So as simple as that. If a question says patient presenting with flaccid bullae with oral ulcers. Pemphigus vulgaris, 
only flaccid bullae it is pelvigus fallacious dsg 3 and 1 in vulgaris dsg 1 in fallacious now what is dsg these are desmoglenes desmosome is the name of the structure which binds the cells now that structure is made up of some proteins those proteins are called as desmoglenes so what comes first f f comes first so it has the first desmoglene while v comes in the end so it has the last desmoglene <coughs> <coughs> so pemphigus fallacious has desmoglene 1 and pemphigus vulgaris has 1 and 3 then you see if the mucosa is involved it is vulgaris if it is not involved it is fallacious nikolsky sign is positive in both Bulla spread sign is positive in both. In Nikolsky sign, there is rubbing on the skin which causes peeling. In Bulla spread sign, when you put a pressure on the Bulla, the Bulla increases. So, this is Bulla spread sign. You don't need to know what is happening in these signs, you just need to know the names. Where are they seen? So, Nikolsky sign is seen in Pemphigus, Vulgaris and Fallacious and Bulla spread is also seen there. Next, we come to Zang smear. In the Zang smear, the finding that we get is acantholytic cells which are called as Zang cells. Okay. So, these are Zang cells. Then in the histopath, nobody is asking you the histopath. We can leave it. Just remember row of tombstone appearance is seen in vulgaris. DIF is very important. Fish net IgG pattern. Intraepidermal. Very typical finding on the DIF. Just remember if you get this kind of an image in which we have the fish net IgG pattern. This is pemphigus. Very, very, very important very important fishnet IgG. A biologic that we use in pemphigus is rituximab. A biologic that we use in pemphigus is rituximab. Okay. So, this is rituximab. Can you tell me what is the mechanism of action of rituximab? Can you tell me the mechanism of action of rituximab? Yes, this is an anti-CD20 drug. Then we come to pemphigoid. In pemphigoid, the first thing that you have to remember is bullous pemphigoid. Seen in elderly patients presenting with tense bullae with itching. So, if you get a question, a 60-year-old patient presented with tense itchy bullae on a red base, what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is bullous pemphigoid. Look at this tense balloon like bulla. So, this is a tense bulla which we see in pemphigoid. Since it is deep, it is deep, so it will have a subepidermal cleft. You see eosinophils here, this is a question here and DIF shows a linear IgG. Basically, here the problem is at the basement membrane zone. So, it is the basement membrane zone which will light up. So, in all the Subepidermal disorders, we will see DIF positive in the basement membrane zone. What we see here is the linear IgG and the C3 in the basement membrane zone. Then we have linear IgA disease. The only thing that you have to remember here is that the patient has string of pearl appearance and this is also called as chronic bullous disease of childhood. This used to be a very favorite question in the FMG exam. It can be asked again also. When you see these bullae arranged peripherally like this, this is called as the string of pearl or the cluster of jewel appearance seen in linear IgA disease. Then we have dermatitis, herpetiformis. With this, you have to remember that this is associated with celiac disease. Remember, dermatitis herpetiformis is associated with celiac disease. And even though it doesn't have the word D in it, it is still subepidermal. If you want to see the D here, most welcome. But 
bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis epitiformis, these both are subepidermal disorders and this is associated with celiac disease. The two questions that you can get here is it has papillary tip abscesses. So this has papillary tip abscesses which are composed of neutrophils and in the DIF we see a granular IgA at the basement membrane zone. So very important what we see here is the granular IgA deposit at the basement membrane zone. <coughs> so in the pemphigus there was the fishnet, pemphigoid, linear IgG, dermatitis herpetiformis, granular IgA. Remember the name of the antibody it is IgA and it is granular. Treatment of choice. Dapsone plus a gluten free diet. Can you tell me the meaning of gluten free diet? What the patient can eat and what they cannot eat. So, what they can eat and what they cannot eat in gluten free diet? Yes, all of you know it. You have to avoid brow and the patient can eat PCR. <coughs> What is PCR here? What is PCR? Pulses, corn and rice. So the patient can eat pulses which are dals. Then they can eat corn or maize and rice. So this is a gluten free diet. C is not for cereal. C is for corn. Cereals generally these patients cannot eat. Then we have epidermolysis bullosa. Here the only thing that you have to remember is if a baby comes with bullae at trauma prone areas with family history, the answer is epidermolysis bullosa. That's it. You are not asked anything else. If a baby comes with bullae at trauma prone areas, father, mother, sibling has similar history, then this is epidermolysis bullosa. Understood everyone? Clear till now? Chalo, great. We come to the next topic which is pigmentation disorders. I think we have just about 45 minutes of class remaining. So we come to pigmentation disorders. In the pigmentation disorders, the first that we have to know is melasma in which there are bilateral brown spots on the face of the patient. So bilateral brown spots. Remember sometimes melasma is there in the differential diagnosis of malar rash also. But how can it be in the differential diagnosis of malar rash or rosacea? This is brown in color. Sunlight, very important trigger, pregnancy, OCPs, everything. <coughs> then we have congenital melanocytic nevus. We all have melanocytic nevus. These are the moles that are present since birth. They are called as congenital melanocytic nevus. Okay. So these are present since birth. It will be a black lesion with coarse dark hair. Generally, these big ones are the ones which are the congenital melanocytic nevus okay so dark black hair with coarse black skin it is black the most important thing here is that this is black in color and it is present since birth giant lesions have a risk of <coughs> malignant melanoma so this was the question that was asked in the NEET 2023 what is the risk in a giant congenital melanocytic nevus? It is onset of a melanoma. Then we have the Becker's nevus. You have to basically differentiate Becker's nevus from a congenital melanocytic nevus. This comes at puberty and it is more brown in color. Congenital melanocytic nevus present since birth, black in color. Becker's nevus present 
after puberty and it is brown in color that is the major difference <coughs> wait so this is the major difference between the congenital melanocytic nevus and the becker's nevus see this image again congenital melanocytic nevus is black in color while becker's nevus is brown in color a Mongolian spot, very very important question for the FMG exam as an image present in the newborn as blue colored patches on the lumbosacral area. What is Mongolian spot? This is an example of dermal melanocytosis. So, melanocytes are present in the dermis which is why they look blue gray in color. So, newborn blue spots on the back, this is Mongolian spots. The Neva Supporta was there in the option in the last two exams. This comes in the adults. It is present on one side of the face as blue gray <coughs> lesions. Differentiate this from melasma. Melasma is present bilaterally and it is brown. Neva of Ota is present unilaterally and it is blue gray in color that is the difference between melasma and nevus of ota then there is another nevus which is called as nevus of ito nevus of ito is present on the back the acromioclavicular area so this is blue gray macules present on the back okay no there is a difference i will tell you this is the nevus of ito see this is present on the back nevus of ito this is also something that comes later in life it is nevus of ito don't confuse it with something which is called as hypomelanosis of ito that also i will show you okay so remember nevus of ota and ito are dark these are dark remember o for ocular so nevus of ota is seen around the eyes this is seen on the face nevus of ota is seen on the face around the eyes o for ota o for ocular area ito is seen on the back these are both dark lesions now we come to the depigmentations in depigmentations the first one that we have is albinism genetic disorder autosomal recessive inheritance defect in tyrosinase enzyme because of which melanin cannot be formed so white skin white hair white eyes this is blue eyes this is what you see in albinism what are the questions here autosomal recessive inheritance and defect in the tyrosinase enzyme very 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 important then we have vitiligo this is an autoimmune disease where the melanocytes are killed because of which depigmented patches are present on the skin this is also called as leucoderma what is the sign that you see a vitiligo lesion on a line here <coughs> can anyone tell me the sign here where we see this vitiligo lesion on the scratch line it is present linearly yes this is the comnus phenomena which we see in vitiligo then we have vitiligo vulgaris which is the most common type here we have vitiligo lesions present all over the body then we have segmental vitiligo where if you see there is a midline demarcation lesions are unilateral along a segment so here lesions are unilateral and they are along a segment this is segmental vitiligo generally it is not at birth it comes in a child so patient will be a child with unilateral segmental vitiligo okay what is leukotrichia presence of white hair in a vitiligo lesion on its own this is a poor prognostic marker means if the hair in the vitiligo lesion become white there is leukotrichia there are less chances of response in this patient okay so there are less chances of response in the patient so this is a poor <coughs> prognostic marker 
then we have chemical leukoderma where a chemical is causing whiteness the most important thing that you have to remember is bindi induced leukoderma the chemical here is ptbp para tertiary butyl phenol okay so b for ptbp b for bindi so remember bindi leukoderma the chemical is ptbp what you see here is a white spot which develops at the site of bindi application now whenever you get a question of segmental vitiligo there are some important diseases which are present in the options on their own these may not be asked in the exam but in terms of options they are there in the segmental vitiligo question so you need to know them the first is nevus depigmentosus this will be present in a child since birth so here this lesion will be present since the birth of the child on the other hand when you see segmental vitiligo that will come later in life and it will have leukotrichia on the other hand here there is no leukotrichia okay so this is nevus depigmentosus then we have piebaldism this is also there in the options piebaldism is also present at birth autosomal dominant inheritance iske andar you have to remember indira gandhi so there is white hair above the lesion like a horse like an indira gandhi so this is also not segmental vitiligo here you will have a lesion on the forehead and it will go and involve the hair above it okay so this is the difference between piebaldism and segmental vitiligo don't mix them then another word that you see in the options is hypomelanosis of eto okay hypomelanosis of eto will be white lines can you tell me what is this pattern here you see there is a midline demarcation and then there are white lines on the body can you tell me what is this pattern in which these white lines are seen if you remember i told you this in the beginning of the class also i told you this thing in the beginning of the class also white lines in a what is this pattern what is this pattern here no this is not a dermatome you see these lines the shape is not straight these are slightly curved lines these are blaschoid lines my dear dear students hypomelanosis of eto is present in a blaschoid pattern and then there is another word which matches it this is nevus of eto nevus of eto is seen on the back and it is blue in color so don't confuse nevus of eto with hypomelanosis of eto these are two completely different things okay next we come to eczema in eczema the thing that we have to remember for the exam is allergic contact dermatitis this follows a delay type 4 hypersensitivity in pathogenesis most common cause of acd in india is parthenium most common metal cause is nickel so most common cause parthenium most common metal is nickel nickel is found in all artificial jewelry so wherever you see any kind of reaction that happens to artificial jewelry belt buckle wrist strap everywhere the cause is nickel <clears throat> then in cement c for cement c for chromate so cement dermatitis seen in laborers the cause is potassium dichromate hair dye dermatitis da 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 ओके सो एवरीवेयर वी जस्ट ट्राई टू मेक आर ओन न्यूमोनिक्स है ना हमें और क्या चाहिए वी हैव टू रिमेंबर हाउ सो एवर वी रिमेंबर सो सीमेंट डर्मेटाइटिस पोटेशियम डाइक्रोमेट हेयर डाई डर्मेटाइटिस पैराफिनाइमीन डाईमाइड दिस वाज अ क्वेश्चन आस्ट इन द नीट पीजी 2023 एग्जाम सो इट कैन बी आस्ट फ्रॉम यू आल्सो सो हेयर डाई डर्मेटाइटिस रिमेंबर द कॉज पीपीडी 
Then we come to parthenium dermatitis which is also called as airborne contact dermatitis. Here it will be a farmer living in a rural area presenting with an itchy rash on exposed parts of the body. So whenever the question says that there is a farmer with itchy rash on exposed parts of the body, the answer is parthenium dermatitis or airborne contact dermatitis. The investigation that we do here is called as the patch test in which we stick patches on the back. We take a reading at 48 and 96 hours and then we make the confirmed diagnosis. So confirmation of diagnosis is by patch <coughs> test. Confirmation of diagnosis is by doing a patch test. Then we have atopic dermatitis, chronic dermatitis, filagrin deficiency, itchy rash with a personal or a family history of an atopic disease. Generally, the atopic disease that is mentioned in the questions is asthma. That the child has rash, then the mother has asthma. What is the diagnosis? Diagnosis is atopic dermatitis, chronic relapsing remitting dermatitis, filigrin deficiency, itching is a very important feature. A very important hint is personal or a family history of atopic disease either in the patient or in the family. <clears throat> Infantile dermatitis when this question comes baby will have an acute rash on the face with mother having bronchial asthma the answer is atopic dermatitis okay. So acute rash on the face of the child is infantile AD. In the childhood and the adult it is the flexures which are most commonly involved the most common flexure is this one. Which flexure is this? The cubital fossa. So in childhood and adult atopic dermatitis, the most common site is cubital fossa. Then we see lip liquidus here. White dermographism, wherever you write on the skin, it turns white. So this is white dermographism. Then around the eyes, we see extra lines under the eyes. These are called as Demi Morgan folds. This is an important image based question. Please remember this is a very important image based question. The Denny Morgan folds. These are extra lines under the eyes in a atopic dermatitis patient. Then we have seboric dermatitis. In seboric dermatitis there is exaggerated immune response against a fungus which lives in these areas which is Malazesia furfur. So remember what is the fungus that is involved in seboric dermatitis? It is Malazesia furfur. If a question wants you to diagnose <coughs> seboric dermatitis, it will say that the patient presents with a rash with yellow greasy scaling. So a rash with yellow greasy scaling is seboric dermatitis. When it happens on the scalp of a baby, you see these thick yellow greasy scales on the child's scalp. It is called as cradle cap. This as a question is asked before. So where is cradle cap seen? What is it? This is seboric dermatitis on the scalp of a baby. With drug reactions, there is one very important thing I want to tell you. When it calls drug eruption, means patient has had a drug which has led to a skin rash. Now, if it is a single rash, this is a fixed drug eruption. If it is a target lesion then this is erythema multiforme and if there is peeling of skin with oral ulcers this is toxic epidermal necrolysis. This is how you have to approach a question of a drug eruption. Single lesion FDE target lesion erythema multiforme, 
peeling of skin, oral ulcers, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Is this clear to everybody? This is how any and every question of drug eruption will be answered. Now come back here. If a patient takes the drug, every time they take the drug, they develop the rash at the same side. This is called as a fixed drug eruption. It will be a typical beautiful purple rash with redness around it. And this is a fixed drug eruption. Then in erythema multiforme, you have to remember that the most common infectious cause is herpes. Most common infectious cause is herpes. You get a target lesion here with three concentric rings. This is called as a target lesion, also called as a bull's eye lesion, also called as a iris lesion. So this is a lesion with three concentric rings in it. This is erythema multiforme. Then SJS10, most commonly by antibiotics and antiepileptics. Less body surface area, SJS, more body surface area, 10. Generally, what you get is a question of this. This is an image. This is toxic epidermal necrolysis. Here you see that the skin peels in sheets. So the skin peels in sheets along with that the patient has oral ulcers. So this is toxic epidermal necrolysis. Then we come to genodermatosis. This was the question asked last year in the June exam. Autosomal dominant inheritance. Patient presents with these coffee colored macules on the skin which are called as caffeole macules. Then there is axillary freckling. Freckles are small, small brown, brown dots. And the most important thing is this. Which are these skin colored swellings that are the neurofibromas. So what was the question last year? Question said a patient presents with multiple coffee colored lesions on the skin with skin colored swellings what is the inheritance of the disease so inheritance of the disease is autosomal dominant okay so it is autosomal dominant and what are these lesions these are all neurofibromas a sign here is the buttonhole sign and these bigger lesions are plexiform neurofibromas where on palpation you get a bag of form feeling on palpation okay so this is neurofibromatosis type 1 in the eye we get these nodules What is this? In the eye, we get leash nodules. Then we come to tuberous sclerosis, also called as Bonneville's disease, inheritance autosomal dominant triad epiloia, where we have epilepsy, low intelligence, and adenoma sebaceum. So, in, remember the inheritance of tuberous sclerosis, autosomal dominant and a synonym Bolzul disease, triad epi lower. Earliest lesion, ash leaf macules, but what you can get in, in the image are these lesions of adenoma sebaceum which you see on the face as these multiple papules around the nose. So, you get multiple such skin colored papules around the nose, these are called as adenoma sebaceum and on the feet we get Keenan's tumors which are called as periangual fibromas you see around the nail here you get these so this is the nail you get these 
skin colored swellings around the nail these are called as keenan's tumors these are just some words which you need to remember may not be asked as image based questions but you still need to know because these days you know they are asking just everything that they want to ask it's no longer a few things that you have to read some idea somewhere in some corner of your mind you should have i'm not asking you to remember everything but like they say it should be suna suna and not suna suna okay so suna suna hoga agar means kahin kabhi suna hai if you heard it somewhere you can still use that knowledge to make a guess to eliminate options it should not be suna suna it should not be something that you've never read you've never you know seen before so suna suna is the aim and what you can remember out of it that is the best thing so coming to incontinentia pigmentae remember the inheritance x link dominant so patient is always a female there are black lines with a midline demarcation see this distribution blachcoid pattern so when we have a blachcoid pattern white lines in blachcoid pattern is hypomelanosis of eto black lines in blachcoid pattern is incontinentia pigmentae okay then xeroderma pigmentosum extremely favorite question from dermatology from biochemistry from everywhere so inheritance autosomal dominant ayyo nakko so inheritance autosomal recessive there is a defect in the dna repair mechanism which is nucleotide excision repair so the defect is in the nucleotide excision repair you get a child who presents with pigmented lesions on the face see the word here zero means dry skin pigmentosum means the child generally has freckles so dry skin freckles photophobia red eye everything the patient is going to present with plus there is an autosomal recessive inheritance means there may be a family history of similar disease so this is zero derma pigmentosum pute jagger syndrome question from surgery autosomal dominant inheritance colonic polyps but you can get this thing which is yes of course there is an increased risk of all types of skin cancers in xeroderma pigmentosum and in fact it is the most common cause of death under 20 years of age in these patients increased risk of all types of skin malignancies then we have pute jagger autosomal dominant colonic polyps and lentigenes on the mucosa urticaria angioedema urticaria you know is a type 1 hypersensitivity phenomena mediated by histamine you get these blanchable veils the primary lesion of urticaria is a veil and what is the main complaint here itch veils are itchy when you have an ant bite or a mosquito bite you develop that small red veil there so this is all urticaria and the main complaint that we have here is itchy veils on the body then in some patients when you stroke on the skin with a blunt object you get veils in that pattern this is called as symptomatic dermographism also called as red dermographism do not ever confuse this with white dermographism which is seen in atopic dermatitis so atopic dermatitis has white dermographism and urticaria has red dermographism which is appearance of veils in stroking now this is something i had read one of the students had written urticaria <coughs> when i was telling white dermographism and atopic dermatitis please remember they are not the same these are completely different cholinergic urticaria when we have urticaria developing on exercise or going out in sun this is called as cholinergic urticaria so if a question says a patient develops red itchy veils on the body when they go out in the sun and on eating hot spicy food what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is cholinergic urticaria then urticaria pigmentosa the only thing that you have to remember is mast cell proliferation dairy sign positive only two things that you have to remember here nothing else 
it is a type of cutaneous mast cell proliferation and we see various sign positive here so this is urticaria pigmentosa in angioedema it is a subcutaneous edema ace inhibitors can cause it mediator is bradykinin Hereditary angioedema also called as Quinky's disease due to C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency. Phew, autosomal dominant inheritance. Too much to remember here but we have to remember. Ab to kab. Ab to kab. You know when I was in 12th standard. This is way back then. In February, month of February there was an India-South Africa test match going on. You know, at that time, cricket used to be very crazy. It is even now. But back then, we had not mm, nothing else. There was no internet. There was nothing. The only good time pass was cricket matches. So, in February, just before my 12th board exams, we had the India-South Africa matches. And one day, I was watching it. So, a family member comes and tells me, if you don't study now, to kab. So in Hindi it was ab nahi padegi to kab padegi match band kar. And that was something maybe I had to hear. Wo sunna hi tha mujhe. Ke ab nahi padegi to kab padegi. Us din ke baad agle ek mahine tak maine koi match nahi dekha. Maine sirf padhai kari. Now also India South Africa going on. Oh ho what amazing. Or was it yesterday? I think the match was yesterday, not today. Anyway, so, ab nahi padegi to kab padegi. So, for you all also sitting there with just one month remaining to the exam, ab nahi padoge to kab padoge. To ab to padna hi padna. You know, this is the time you cannot have anything else going on in your mind. You cannot have anything else going on in your life. No yari dosti, no ishq, no aashiki. It is only padhai for one month. Aisa maan lo, just think, if you study for this one month, you are sparing yourself of many, many, many months of study. You know, aaj ek baar padh loge, to bas aage bohat aur mahine nahi padhna padega. You know, if this is your motivation, just take this. I hate studying. So, if I hate studying, I don't want to spend any more time sitting with these books, then maybe just spend one month with them and not spend six months more. Okay? So, just think like this and study every, every day as many hours as you can for the next one month. So, coming to angioedema, subcutaneous edema, ACE inhibitors can cause it, mediated bradykinin. Hereditary angioedema is Quinky's disease, autosomal dominant inheritance. That is all. Dekho, I gave my 12th exams in 2004. I gave my 12th exams in 2004. From 2004 till today, and it was my Tayaji, you know, my brother's elder brother, my father's elder brother. So he was the one who told me, Abni padegi to kab padegi. And till now, he doesn't know it, but I th thank him many times mentally for this. So, if something helps you in studying, it should help you. And I ended up scoring 98% best of 4 and 12 standard. Maybe just that one month of studying gave me that 98%. Maybe, maybe not, but this one month of studying can give you your marks which you want to clear this exam. So this is about angioedema. The difference here from urticaria is that you get a swelling and you don't get wheels here. Okay. So this is the difference between urticaria and angioedema. Now we come to skin tumors. Very, very important. Every year multiple, multiple questions on skin tumors
so boric keratosis on their own they don't ask but in this exam in the july exam it was there in the option for melanoma okay so these are brown lesions with a rough surface they are not the black malignancies that you see in melanoma so these are brown lesions these are benign tumors sometimes a rapid increase in seborrheic keratosis called as laser trillard sign can tell you that the patient might be having gastric adenocarcinoma so this is called as the laser trillard sign then we have syringomas again it has been asked in the option before this is a tumor of the eccrine sweat glands you see these lesions around the eyes of the patient so syringoma is around the eyes and this is a tumor of the eccrine sweat glands then we have keratoacanthoma again it is generally just there in the options not as a question on its own this is related to a squamous cell carcinoma here you get a big nodule with a central gadda that gadda is full of yellow keratin mind overloaded dr sam just bear with me for another 15 minutes and dermatology is over for you okay so another 15 minutes and dermatology is over so if you have sat through these 3 and a half hours with me and also remembered i can promise you that you will get all the questions correct in the exam that's not much of a time to spend for 8 marks yes not much of a time input output dekho so this is keratoacanthoma this is a gadda full of keratin debris how do you differentiate keratoacanthoma from molluscum molluscum mein multiple lesions honge group mein honge white honge and inke center mein <coughs> umbilication hogi keratoacanthoma single lesion nodule and in ke center mein yellow keratin debris oh beta beta there is no dermatology preparation without the pyqs there is no dermatology preparation without the pyqs you have seen the red boxes that i have put the red boxes are all pyqs they are often repeated it may not be the exact question it may be the topic so the focus is more on pyts than pyq okay so you should know the topic as well as the question there is no way there is no preparation without this aur kuch nahi padhna to ye 3 ghante ka video dekh lo aur pyq kar lo bas bahut hai ठीक है इफ यू डोंट हैव सो मच टाइम फॉर डर्मेटोलॉजी जस्ट सी दिस वीडियो एंड डू द पी वाई क्यूज एंड यू आर ऑल सेट फॉर द एग्जाम सी द रेड बॉक्स इज हियर दिस इज व्हाट आई वाज टेलिंग यू दैट इज व्हाट दे डू नाउ हाउ कैन यू नॉट डू द पी वाई क्यूज देयर इज नो वे यू कैन स्किप ऑन दिस पार्ट बीसीसी मोस्ट कॉमन स्किन कैंसर इट इज अ क्रॉनिक स्लोली अग्रेसिव tumor generally the question may say that it is present since 2 3 years in an elderly patient so it will be a 60 or a 70 year old patient with lesion present since 2 3 years when you look at it closely beautiful lesion here you see this is a very beautiful lesion skin color lesion shiny you see these red red telling like tezias on the surface then this is the beautiful rolled up border that you see here so it is the rolled up border which tells you that the patient has bcc then in some patients the bcc can get ulcerated this ulcerated bcc is called as a rodent ulcer this used to be a very very favorite question of the fmg exam rodent ulcer this is ulcerated bcc and the edges are undermined here again how do you know this is bcc look at the rolled up border okay so this is the rolled up border in the treatment five fluorouracil imikumod and most micrographic surgery is done but they don't ask you the treatment they just ask you the image 
then this was a question which was taken up from 2019 and given in 2023 this is the marjolin ulcer here you have the surrounding skin on a scar which means maybe there was a burn scar and in the center of the burn scar there is a non-healing ulcer this is a marjolin ulcer this is SCC developing in a burn scar. This is marginal ulcer. Then this was a new question in the August exam. This is a cutaneous horn here. On the base of this cutaneous horn, there is a squamous cell carcinoma. So the question said a patient presented with a cutaneous horn as shown in the image, which of the following malignancies is associated with it? So what is the malignancy associated with the horn? Squamous cell carcinoma. Noma. Then we have malignant melanoma again. See how can you not do PYQs? This was a question asked for the first time in 2020 and then they repeated in 2023. So here what you have is a malignancy of the melanocytes. So this will always be a black colored malignancy. So this will be a black colored malignancy. In prognosis, we use a criteria. You just have to know the name. This is called as Breslau thickness. So it will be black. Even if you see brown, brown will also have different colors of brown. So the most important thing is here, different colors. So you see variable colors. This is called as the ABCDE assessment of melanoma. If you are suspecting a melanoma, you do a A, B, C, D, E assessment where A stands for asymmetry, B is uneven borders, C multiple colors, large diameter and changes which is evolving. So we see if the lesion is having changes, if it is becoming cancerous, then it will increase in size, it will become asymmetric, it will have uneven borders. Then the cancer cells can go upper, they can go niche, they can go side. So there will be multiple colors, large diameter and changes. This is the A, B, C, D, E assessment of melanoma. This question has been asked in your exam. All of this is a part of A, B, C, D assessment except. So you should know this. Then there is a malignancy which is called as mycosis fungoides. The only thing that you have to remember here is this is a cutaneous T cell lymphoma. And there is an abscess here which is called as Potrier's abscess. So this is the only thing that you have to remember in mycosis fungoides. It's a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma with Potrier's abscess. Okay. What is Potrier's abscess? In the epidermis, we see these lymphocytic collections. Then Sagery syndrome is also related to mycosis fungoides. That's it. You don't have to know anything else. There is nothing that you need to know. Just remember, surgery syndrome is seen as the last stage of a patient with mycosis fungoides. In some paraneoplastic things, acanthosis nigricans associated with gastric adenocarcinoma, necrolytic migratory erythema, glucagonoma, migratory thrombophlebitis CA, pancreas. This is also called as Traugeau syndrome. So migratory thrombophlebitis seen with pancreatic carcinoma also called as Trujo syndrome. Understood everyone? Very, 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 very important. Acanthosis nigricans with gastric adenocarcinoma. Last topic of the day. So another 10 minutes at max and we are done. You want to read more? 10 minutes se zyada padna hai? I will teach you 10 minutes se zyada. Don't worry. Acanthosis nigricans. Associations. Diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome. Basically, all causes of insulin resistance what you see here is velvety hyperpigmentation on the neck and the axillae 
So velvety hyperpigmentation of the neck, of the axillae, of the groin. <coughs> this is all acanthosis nigricans. All causes of insulin resistance, diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, then drugs like nicotinic acid and OCPs, malignancy, gastric adenocarcinoma. These are all associations with acanthosis nigricans. Very, very, very important, often asked in your exam. Then there can be some skin tags associated with it called as acro. Cordon. Then we have dermatomyositis. Typical rash that we have to remember is heliotrope rash and Gottron's papules. Heliotrope rash is redness around the eyes. How do you differentiate heliotrope rash from Melar rash? In Melar rash, it is the butterfly rash on the cheeks and the nose. Here it is around the eyes. Okay. And Gottron's papules, very, 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 very important. These are multiple fibrillaceous papules on the interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints in a patient with dermatomyositis. Very important. Remember these two words, heliotrope rash and Gottron's papules. Then in cutaneous LE, this is the rash that we've talked about. Even this doesn't know how much we have missed it through the class, right? So this is acute LE. What we see here? This is the beautiful Mela rash, which we see in SLE. Okay, so this is the SLE. And remember, SLE always has non-scarring alopecia while DLE will always have scarring alopecia very very important to remember this systemic sclerosis mask like faces then thin tapered fingers this is something that you read in medicine also sclerodactyly and what is this phenomena here where there is blue discoloration of the fingers on exposure to cold? What is this happening here? Yes, this is Reynolds phenomena. Can you tell me the sequence of color changes in Reynolds phenomena? What is the sequence of color changes in Reynolds phenomena? I remember it as PCR. Yes, WBR is also fine. P stands for pallor, C is for cyanosis, and R is for rubra. WBR is also fine. So, this is the sequence of color changes in Reynolds. Then, see the red and the green dubbe here. As if they never had anything else to ask in life. This is what they do. This is pellagra, deficiency of niacin, which is vitamin B3. Seen more in patients who are alcoholics or maize eaters. So, seen in alcoholics and maize eaters, what you see is a triad of diarrhea, dementia, dermatitis. The typical rash here is a photosensitive rash seen on the neck. It is called as the Kessel's necklace. If left untreated, a fourth D is added, which is called as death. So, this is pellagra. Remember, remember and remember vitamin B3, Kessel's necklace and the four Ds. Then we have acrodermatitis enteropathica. This was the question asked in the July 23 exam. So, very, very important. Deficiency of zinc, autosomal recessive inheritance and the triad here is DAD. Diarrhea, alopecia, dermatitis. In the question, it also mentioned poor wound healing. So, a patient presents with diarrhea, a rash on the face and the groin, poor wound healing. What is the answer? The answer is acrodermatitis enteropathica, zinc deficiency, autosomal recessive inheritance. Very, very, very important. Then we have granuloma annulare on its own. This is not asked, but in 2020 exam, this was there in the options. Granuloma means in the histopath, it will show granuloma. And annulare means 
on the skin it will be a ring shaped lesion so when you see this lesion here can you main can you see the ring here so this is the ring that is running here but this is a ring so how do you differentiate this from ring worm which is tenia how do you differentiate this from tenia How can you differentiate granuloma annulare from tenia? The first word on the page here, asymptomatic. Remember granuloma annulare is asymptomatic. It does not have itching. Plus the skin is completely smooth. There is no scalings, vesicles or pustules here. So the skin is completely clean. You just see the ring and there is no itching here. This is how you differentiate granuloma annulare from tenia. Then we have the ichthyosis, ichthyosis vulgaris, autosomal dominant inheritance. What you get is a question on X-linked recessive ichthyosis, which is generally seen in boys as dark black scales. So what you get a question is X-linked recessive ichthyosis seen in boys with dark black scales. Then this question is also a PYQ to differentiate between a colloidon BB and a harlequin ichthyosis. C for colloidon, C for cellophane. So C for colloidon, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> C for colloidon, C for cellophane. So this looks as if a BB is wrapped in a cellophane sheet. and Harlequin, even though Harlequin is an old name for jokers in the European countries, but if you read the word Harlequin, it sounds like somebody who is a fighter, somebody who wins battles. So Harlequin is somebody who is wearing a big thick coat like scale. So this is like such a thick scale, it looks as if the BB is wearing a white coat like an armor and it develops cracks in it. So we have colloidon BB versus harlequin ichthyosis. Colloidon will be a cellophane sheet. Harlequin will be a baby wrapped in white coat. Then we have neutrophilic dermatosis. Here the skin has neutrophils seen in patient who is a known case of inflammatory bowel disease. So a patient of inflammatory bowel disease can develop sweet syndrome, can develop pyoderma gangrenosum. Sweet means mithai. So here patient has red mithai. You will see red burfi on the skin. Painful red lesions on the body. So these are by definition all of them are painful. So painful mithai, sweet syndrome. Painful ulcer is pyoderma gangrenosum. Gangrene means there is an ulcer happening here. So, a painful ulcer, pyoderma gangrenosum, red burfi is red mithai. Okay, what is the treatment of choice for both is steroids. Treatment of choice for both is steroids. Okay, inflammatory bowel disease can be ulcerative colitis, it can be Crohn's disease, it can be both. Besets disease. Oral and genital recurrent aphthe in the eye, patient will have uveitis and on the skin there will be a positive pathology test. See, these are all questions where you just need to know these one one lines. Nobody is asking you images here, nobody is asking you anything else. Yad hai to thik hai, nahi yaad to bhi thik hai, but you should know few lines. The active arthritis was there in the options this time with respect to psoriatic arthritis generally follows a non-gonococcal urethritis, can also follow some GI infections, typical triad here of non-gonococcal urethritis plus arthritis plus conjunctivitis. So non-gonococcal urethritis, arthritis and conjunctivitis. So this is the typical triad with which a patient presents more common in those who have HLA B27 positivity. In the older times it was called as Reiter's syndrome but not anymore. The new name is reactive arthritis. Then the last slide, yay!
So last night, any last topic? There are two slides to this topic. So here we have his cutest marmorator. This is a neat 2019 question. In a newborn baby on exposure to cold, there is a reticulate marbling on the skin. This is called as cutest marmorator. Completely normal physiological finding happens due to cold. The minute you cover the baby, this disappears. So when you see this kind of marbling on the body of the patient, it is a newborn. This is called as cutis marmorata. <coughs> then we have portwine stain, salmon patch, and infantile hemangioma. Out of which infantile hemangioma was asked in the Jan twenty three exam. सबसे पहले we will see salmon patch. Salmon patch is present at birth as a red macule in the midline, either on the forehead or the nape of the neck. So this is a red macule in the midline, also called as nevus simplex. Now we come to port wine stain. This is also present at birth. This is unilateral. It is a non-blanchable red lesion, and P for port wine, P for persistent. This is persistent through the life of the patient. Okay, so this is a port wine stain. See, it is unilateral. Most common distribution is V1, V2 division of trigeminal nerve. So this is how a port wine stain looks like, and it is persistent through the life of the patient. Can you tell me a syndrome which is associated with port wine stain? Sturge Weber syndrome. Very good. This is also called as nevus flammaeus. Then lastly, we have infantile hemangioma. This is a red ladu. This is not present at birth. Comes in the first month, and it presents as a red ladu. Increases in size for three four years and then it reduces on its own. So this is a infantile hemangioma. Most important thing: this is not present at birth. Comes in the first month of life. So this is how you differentiate these different vascular lesions. And lastly, this question has been asked many a times. This is Hinoch Shonlin Purpura. Also called as IgA vasculitis, baby presents with palpable purpura on the dependent parts of the body, with abdominal pain, with glomerulonephritis and arthritis. So this is Hinoch Shonlin purpura. Very very you know important question from pediatrics. IgA deposition is an important question from pathology also, and in derma also. So with this, we have finished the entire dermatology, which is necessary for your exam. Everything that we have read today is important. I will not say that you can skip any of this. So there is nothing which I am going to say is important on its own. Every word that we have read through these three and a half hours is important. I will suggest, as I said in the beginning of the class, also after today's session, go back and see the PYQs, and then come back and see the video again. So this way, you will remember everything. It will be cemented in your mind. Any doubts, you can always get back to us. You can get back on Instagram, Dr. Pallavi Dermatology. Any doubts, you can message on this channel. They will be forwarded to me. So all the best, all the best, and all the best. तीस दिन की मेहनत है. अब नहीं पढ़ोगे तो कब पढ़ोगे? जान दे दो. But नहीं 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 नहीं. जान पढ़ाई की जान ले लो. अपनी नहीं ये गलत 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 चुप. So जान लगा के पढ़ाई कर लो. But छोड़ना नहीं ये एग्जाम को. इसको पार करके देना है. See you on the other side of the exam. Good night. Dear students, बस पढ़ लो इतना ही बोलूंगी मैं ओके okay, हम मजे करेंगे यार एक बार एग्जाम हो गया फिर बहुत मजे करेंगे अभी एक महीने की पढ़ाई है फिर एग्जाम हो गया तो किताबों को मुड़ के मत देखना कुछ टाइम के लिए ठीक है 
don't tell my pg professors but after i joined dermatology for 2 years out of the rebellion of studying for the entrance exam i did not study derma even as a pg for 2 years so रिबेलियन का टाइम आएगा बदले लेने का टाइम आएगा अभी तो पहले उसके लिए एग्जाम क्लियर करना पड़ेगा ठीक है